Queensland High School League of Legends Championship. I'm Mitch Replace Anderson. I'm joined by my co caster Max Horn von Newman. You ready for another week of action? I am definitely ready for another week of action. It is week four. Three weeks are in the books. We're about that mid season point, and it's going to be sure. really, really exciting. But before we get into that broadcast today, we actually have a, two super fun segments besides the QA we had before the broadcast today. Uh, we're joined by two UQ staff members. Uh, from first, firstly, from the UQ esports team, who's uh, in charge of running the high school program entirely, is Tanil Lynch, yep. uh, and the uh, technical coordinator Jack Mason for UQ. So, thanks so much for joining us today. How are you guys going today? Excellently. Thank you very much for having us. Pretty good. Thank you. Good to be here. So, would you two like to each explain briefly, sort of, what you do for the uni in and of itself? Oh, yeah. Tenille. I wouldn't want to stop you from going first, Tanil. <laughs> sure. First off, uh, my name is Tanil Lynch. I'm in charge of the high school program. So, essentially, what I do is go out, reach out to schools talk to uh, teachers and convince them that esports is relevant in high school today and, and the pathways that it can create for young students. Yep. Fantastic. Uh, so my name is Jack Mason. I work with the central IT department. We give the students uh, the greatest hits such as things like wireless internet, um, <laughs> all, all kinds of fun like that, yeah. uh, different applications they engage with. And so we work closely with students to work out what kind of cool things we can provide to make their yep. education better. Excellent. So, I mean, getting right into it, I suppose, we're all here because we're all kind of bits of geeks and nerds. We like our games <laughs> and all of those high schoolers out there, they need to relate. So what kind of games were you two playing back when you were in high school? Um, back in high school, I got internet connection when I was about 15. Um, before that, it was a lot of uh, Tomb Raider and, and those games. But uh, Call of Duty was my first multiplayer online yeah. um, and I definitely yeah. had my fair share of, of that. And then it moved on to um, in university onto things like Dota 2 and mm -hmm. those games. So. And I'm, uh, I'm quite older, I won't bore you with my age, but what I can do, if you want to do the research to, to backtrack it all, is uh, I was a GoldenEye guy in uh, oh, high school, so yeah, Nintendo yeah. 64 yeah, all the way. I'm, I'm in that same generation, I right, was talking that right. See, it's, uh, you're not old, you've just yeah, filled with exactly. wisdom, right? Like, it's not grey in my hair, it's silver. Perfect. Excellent, it's excellent. Silver. <laughs> That's what I thought the first time I saw you, I yeah. said, that guy's got a good silver do, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, and so basically then in university uh, is when things like Halo started to rock, so yeah. Xbox consoles came out, so we all got on board for that for local LAN parties again there was no internet if you wanted uh, to play someone they had to drag their console to your living room but yeah, it was pretty cool yeah I remember those days where you get like two and you get the ethernet cable to link them up and then you have eight pole players in one game and it was this <laughs> massive thing we didn't even know what an ethernet cable was until we had to force people to get together and connect them exactly. yeah but I can't that say that times. I can relate to be honest I've <laughs> never never dealt with that before in my life but um uh, especially, you know, being into games from such an early age, how do you balance that going through, you know, uni back in the day or high school or, you know, your professional lives now? Um, I had quite a busy schedule. I guess before high school, when I was a lot younger, my mum used to schedule gameplay and give me timings that I could play and couldn't. Yeah. Um, if it went over that timing, she would pull the plug. Um, obviously, <laughs> once I started playing competitive games online and she yeah. pulled the plug, I was like, no, <laughs> there's people depending on me. But um, no, I think once I hit high school, I had a pretty set schedule. I always made sure I did some sort of exercise, usually every day. Um, I used to love running, played yeah. a lot of soccer. Um, and I then gaming, if I was tired or, or not feeling it, mm. I wouldn't push myself to play, but uh, I would usually just limit it to a couple hours a night, um, maximum, after my homework, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah my, I guess I'm the opposite. I was the, the naughty child. So through oh. high school, it was, um, it was all day and all night. If I wasn't at school, I was definitely <laughs> slamming a console. But you learn, right? Yeah. So then uh, yeah. I didn't start to do so well in high school, and I thought uh, the only way I can do better is to be more regimented about it. Yep. My mm. parents weren't regimented. So um, that's something I've actually kept all the way through from you know education, yeah. high school, yeah. uh, university, and even professional life now is I put my own limit on myself. So basically, I've always been a weekend guy. Yeah. Uh, ah. It's a little different now. I play mm -hmm. uh, Street Fighter with a bunch of the Brisbane FGC people every Wednesday night, but that's like okay. a little treat. Yeah. But yeah, mostly just on the weekend. That's the way to balance yeah. it is that you gotta, if you force yourself to do it that way, of I course. think then um, life can be more stable. So you gotta, you gotta earn your treats. Yeah. yeah, and obviously that balance is very, very important, which kind of brings up the next question here. It's just like, well, why is that balance important? Why is it important to sort of make sure you have this mix of study in both the games, I suppose, and learning to get better, but also studying in school, pursuing your academic career, and then taking that career. Like, esports can become a career. Sorry if that's a bit disjointed, but I'm trying to guide this here, so. Yeah, no, um, I understand where you're coming from. So having a balanced uh, schedule in high school, it's, it's you want to be really good at a lot of things, yeah. um, not just great at one thing. Um, I think that's particularly important when you're studying at school, you need to have that backup plan. You need to have always, you know, your focus on finishing high school mm, or yep. if you want to go to university, you're focused on going to university and yeah, what you exactly. want to study. You don't need to know what you want to do, but you want to keep your options open. 
And if you are really interested in, in becoming um, joining esports in, in the career, it's not just about these days being a professional player or a content creator. You can go into the works of you know, sound engineering, the broadcast guys who work on this. Yeah. This, this is esports. You guys, you guys are journalists course, and yeah. um, commentators yeah. and casters. So I think having a healthy balance of um, skills and um, interests will actually open up the doors to you a lot later on. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, look, I couldn't agree more. And so the word that many people use is pragmatic. And I mm. think that the attitude that's great is to love something and definitely spend time on it. Yeah. But, um, you know, over-specializing day and night, trying to get really, really good at one game, hyper-competitive, you know, if you don't make the cut, that can be a big sacrifice. Mm, but there's a lot of fun to be had in general, right? Yeah. So by all means, pursue it, but pursue things around it, which can yeah. make you even better, yeah. right? So communications degree or, you know, technology degrees, how could you like make a game yeah. or get involved yeah, with mods yeah. for games? Like, yeah, basically follow your passion, but just um, only playing a game is uh, a risky route. And yeah. that can lead to, you know, instead of going home for two to three hours a night playing games by yourself, yeah. why don't you meet other people who enjoy the games that you play and learn how to develop social skills even? Because cool. yeah. social skills will take you so far after school. Like <laughs> yeah. You have no idea. Most Interviews definitely. and just face-to-face -face stuff like this. Yeah. yeah. And you'll learn some of the best smack talking face-to-face. -face. You know, you can, carry, <laughs> you can carry that online. Of course. But you'll learn the best smack talking face-to-face. -face. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it definitely gets easier as well to balance that as you get more autonomy as you work, work forward and... Grow up. Of course, in high school, it's very busy all the time. You've got six hours of commitment at school and then yeah. another two or three doing homework. And then, you know, once you get into university, you come here to UQ, um, you start to, you know, get a lot more free time, or not free time, but more yeah. um, control over when you spend more your time. Timing. So it's easy to balance um, what kind yeah. of things you want to do. Yes. That's right. Yeah. So, so with that, yeah, I'd like to thank you each so much for, like, coming here and giving a little talk and answering some of our questions. Unfortunately, it might be time to ask you to go because we have some high school league right around the corner. It's thank, going to be good. Thank, thank you very much, gentlemen. Good You're doing luck. excellent work. Yeah, Congratulations stuff. to everyone. <laughs> Tear it up. <laughs> Love that. Oh, I just got straight. I was going to do it. Let's go do the joining. Kind enough to give us some time for a quick interview with Formal and I. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, thanks for joining us today, Corporal. Uh, pretty pretty fortuitous that you came here checking out the uh, UQU esports room. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing pretty well. Uh, I just came here because I wanted to just come meet my friends and then they showed me the esports room and it's pretty cool. It's pretty yeah, nice. Yeah. So great to have you here. Our first question for you today is what, it's like, what is it like being in that team environment um, and you know, living with other people coming straight out of high school? It's, it's really quite a different experience. Like you have to learn how to live independently and like learn all these things like laundry and cooking, which is like <laughs> just really, yeah. it's, it's crazy stuff. And then all with that, you have to like help uh, your teammates like get better. You have to get better yourself, and it's it's like quite stressful, but I think it's worth mm -hmm. it. It's like going to high school, but you only meet your friend group every day. Well, I feel like you know laundry and cooking. That's not necessarily just a team environment, isn't that just a life skill, really? Yeah, but like <laughs> everyone has to contribute, you know. Yeah, so of course. You can't you can't slack off. Oh, you can't just make the person who fed last game just do all the dishes or something. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it would, it'd be the best of both worlds. You motivate them to thing. play better, right? Um, Moving on from that as well, uh, as you know, we're having our Queensland High School League. So there's this whole tournament going on. We're in the middle of it. It's week four now. As a professional player, do you have any advice or anything to give to these high schoolers who are you know, coming together? Some of them, it's their first tournament. Some of them have been playing for years. Like, how can they start to evolve and grow as a team? I think, first of all, like, when I was playing during grade 12, like, I just made sure that I had a backup plan. So like, passing was like, first on my agenda. Like, I, I had to pass and then, once I'd gone that down, I just, uh, any free time I had, I was just spending watching VODs or playing the game and just, like, I see how it went. And then I had an opportunity where I went to Origin for Queensland and then I just got picked up. So I think it's just, like, you just try your hardest and then you'll get noticed if you work on that. Going back to when you're, like, selected by the Dire Wolves and you're moving into the OPL, that was a big moment. Was it more excitement? Was it relief? Was it, like, mm. here's this opportunity, I made it, or motivation time to go out there and prove myself I think as soon as I got announced I was just filled with motivation like I felt like yeah. I had my chance to prove myself and yeah it just gave me like everything I needed like this was what yeah. I wanted to do and yeah. yeah it just filled me with motivation and I mean going back towards your season this year obviously been a bit of a struggle but for uh, teams obviously in this competition who are um, not having the most success immediately how did you guys kind of work through and keep your mental state uh, going out throughout the season to kind of um, get better as the season evolved? I think we were playing this season for improvement. So yeah. the fact that we were improving week to week just made everything more bearable because mm. we knew that like, as long as we try our best and get better and better, yeah. then the results aren't 
as important as they should be, like for a single split. <laughs> exactly. Because this yeah. is our first split, and yeah. we just need to play yeah. for improvement. So moving for summer, you're going to look to uh, take out the OPL and make it to Worlds. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the goal. Okay. Um, bringing it back a little bit though, just within the team environment itself as well. Like how, because as an individual, obviously, yeah, you try hard, you study both in high school and yeah. the game itself, learn all you can. But then, how can you learn as a team? Like, are there any techniques that you have come to implement? I think as a team, you have to learn that people are just people are just different mm. uh, mm -hmm. to each other. Like you have to solve all your differences, and I think most teams are held back when you aren't able to say what's on your mind. So I yeah. think a free, like friendly environment is what you're aiming for. Well, as again, I'd just like to thank Corporal for uh, joining us on the desk today. Yeah. Uh, and once again, yeah, get um, we'll be cutting back to the studio just after this bit. So yeah, thank you very much for, for those quick today. words of encouragement. Um, real thank quick, you. Maruchi Dora versus Craig's Lee. Any prediction, knowing probably nothing about these teams? Craig's Lee sounds better. Craig's Lee, uh, all right. You heard it from Corporal. Pro opinion, Craig's Lee is going to be the favorites <laughs> coming into this one. We'll be right back with you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, good stuff. And we're back. Uh, that was a really fun interview we had with Corporal earlier today from the Dire Wolves. What's kind of impressive is he's someone who's only 17 years old, fresh out of high school, yeah, and is exactly. already playing League of Legends at yeah. a competitive level. Just like the kids that are you know, competing in these competitions well, today. I obviously only came out mm -hmm. this year, so for him it was a little bit late, but you know, it's a great opportunity for anyone who wants to go into professional gaming you know, coming out of that interview. Exactly. It's like good to get into the mindset, good to see where they're at, and sort of the attitude you need to have, understanding that this is a career path that you might want, but also have backups. Yeah, exactly. Also for sure. Focus Make sure you focus studies, on the so. study, focus on passing, like he kind of said, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, always look to move forward and improve. Yeah. yeah. And and I'll learn how to cook and do dishes. That's important as well. Or don't feed in league, so you don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as we stand, though, we are here in week four, and we are about to do battle between Maruchi Dora High School and Craig's Lee. Yeah. Both these teams are kind of new in the last two weeks. They're both looking, you know, like really strong teams that uh, joined a little bit later, but I really hope they'll move up in the rankings. You see Max is completely yep. blocked out here. Oh, hello. I'm um, gonna... But yeah, so they're not actually on the ladder yet because they haven't um, actually played enough games, but I do expect them to, you know, compete with that kind of big group we have up the top. Really interesting game we have today. Uh, that's um, We're not streaming, but it's going to be really fun to see how these teams go on. It's between SPCC Colors and SPS Legacy, two undefeated teams at the top of the table. So it's going to be a really good clash and see. Very, very interesting to see how that goes in uh they might be covering one of those teams next I week. mean, yeah, we could be. Those are each teams that we've seen before on top yeah. of the ladder right now. Where it's Maruchi Dor and Craig's Lee, they're fighting to get on top of that ladder. So this yeah. is a little bit of lower. These teams are flying, I guess, under the radar. As you saw, they were yeah. underneath that eighth place team. <laughs> but hey, there's still six games, six yeah. matches left. Sure. And you get on that winning streak, you start building that momentum. You could find yourself on top of that ladder yeah, as well. Yeah, I definitely expect these teams to kind of work towards it as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know I'm, I'm very excited, of course. We have a break coming up as well, so it'll be interesting to see how these teams reset over the holidays. They get a yes. bit more time to gel together as a team. Um, I don't mm -hmm. know what we're doing yet, but we might be running some holiday programs and stuff here at UQ. Um, yeah. So that'd be really interesting. Obviously, still got next week games to plan. I think we go on break for school holidays for two weeks. Yeah, after the um, mid-season so mid market this week. Stop, week but it's going to be very, very exciting to see you know, what mm -hmm. kind of goes on with these teams and you know how they progress after the... Uh, Mid-season break, I suppose. Exactly. I mean, those three weeks are going to be a good time for teams to sort of regroup, get some practice, and especially for the ones with players who are completely yeah, new to yeah. the game, it's a chance for them to actually catch up, I feel, and get to that level that they might need yeah, to be to exactly. be more competitive in the second half of the split, as well as those teams in the first half of the split to, you know, keep working on this team, to team synergy, keep fixing those little problems. Mm. And hey, I said, we're looking to be running workshops here at the University of Queensland, uh, so please. Maybe, maybe. Maybe, no, no, maybe. No, no, yeah, no, don't lock it in, but there's something Don't lock it in, but on, keep yeah. your eyes on the website for exactly. more information, because that's where you will find it, yep. and if it does go through, which we are hoping it does, then yeah, you can come we pick up some forward. tips and tricks and learning about all that. Good, good stuff. Yeah. As we are going to, I think it's time to go over these team compositions. Yeah, of course. So, um, so I mean, both our teams today, Mm -hmm. Obviously, new, I think, you know, some players to highlight are the midlanders for Maruchidor. He's, uh, you know, playing and playing their 80 carry as well is really nice. And I think um, Craigsley High School have a really good team across the board. They have a very nice even spread about the gold, high, high mm -hmm. silver, low gold elo. So it's going to be a very competitive game and see if, you know, the two or three really good players uh, on Maruchidor can compete with this yeah. entire team who consistently Exactly. Decent as we take a look at Maruchidor High School just now, in the top lane, it'll be Taj McIntosh. League of Legos in the jungle, Baba Shamruda, Bobby, sorry, Bobby Shamruda, Vivo in the mid lane, <laughs> Boofy Crackers, my favorite name on AD Carry, and Snoopy playing support. Yeah, and their opponents today on the red side, Craigsley State High School, rocking up in the top lane, the Vlaxen in the jungle, Snanu Paz in the mid lane, Zaho in the bot lane, oh, Palu E Boy. <laughs> 
Palungi boy. Palungi boy. Palungi boy. And in the support, rolling up the roster is Lamista. Lamesta. Yes. Uh, it, bit of tongue twisters in those Some tongue twisters. Crazy. Yeah, it's going to make my job fun today. Uh, <laughs> Looking at these teams, because we did do a little bit of history yeah. on the players themselves. Obviously, we're not going to go down and reveal their mains yeah, exactly. just, just, yet. just yet. But I'm very excited to watch Marucci George mid laner. I am. I'm very excited to watch you play. He plays a lot of champions similar to me, mm -hmm. um, but I play everything, so you don't know yeah. that <laughs> in particular. So I'm really excited to see what champions he's going to bring out and if he's allowed to get some of his stronger picks. So yes. it's going to be very exciting to see how he can play around. And, you know, they've been playing a lot of mm -hmm. flex few games together, of course. Yes. So if you're on their flex history, you can see a lot of stuff they pick together. And they have a decent win record. And they look like the team's really trying to gel and played a lot of games together. So yes. I really expect their team synergy and their macro play to be really good today. Exactly. And because they've put what I feel is their stronger players on both the mid and AD carry position, mm. I'm really excited to see if they will play around those positions and like yeah. maybe run a protect the AD carry comp, maybe put a lot of jungle pressure in that mid lane. I want to see how well Maruchi Dor can play around their strengths as we are about to head into picks and bans. As you can yeah. take a look, oh, right above me, we're about 35 seconds before we are ready to go. Final thoughts before coming into this one. I mean, you know, given that we've just had 9.6, kind of halfway through the patch now, we generally have one, you know, the next broadcast is going to be the brand new patch and then a review of it. Um, I think Silas is one of those champions I really want to see today. Super easy to play. I've been playing mm -hmm. a bit of Silas myself, so I'm yep. to pick him up. He's super fun to play and just really, really strong as well in both that jungle top and uh, mid lane yep. role. Better in the solo lanes, but as a jungler, functions really well as well. Yeah. Uh, got the E to kind of get really good game control. Closer. It's easy, easy skill shot to land as well. Yep. He's very, very strong champion. So I expect him to either get banned out or picked if the players are up to it. Obviously, they haven't played to practice it. Yep. It's always 100% better to stick with what you know and know what it is. As we are about to draft, yeah, we should uh, be jumping going to draft our real jumping quick. into our draft right now. Just real quickly before we're going to there, you want to see Silas? I'm excited to see Jarvin. We'll see if I then come up as we are about to go. Who will Maruchi Door ban first? Look, I expect him to ban out. Um, I don't know, like just like those strong priority picks. I think you want to get a good matchup for their top laner Taj, mm -hmm. uh, since he up there himself is like one of the lowest rated players on the team. So I think. Securing Taj, a decent matchup where you can just go even and, and let the mid lane bot lane carry is really important. Well, they're going to get rid of that Silas. You, you talked yeah, up the Silas I mean, and there he goes. He's just so strong right now. He's super easy to play. His pass is really strong. He gets really good buffs with his um, Q damage as well and his W heal is ridiculous as well. So quite a strong champion. Orn. Yep. Orn. Orn, the Orn a well. bit of a surprise to see Orn get banned. He hasn't been played much this tournament. However, he is someone who I feel as a tank is very, very strong. Yeah. Uh, he supplies, you know, do a team fight potential and he doesn't have to back. Pantheon, the next ban. Yeah, Pantheon, one of the one trick junglers for Snow Pass. So, uh, one of those champions who is very strong right now in the uh, in the jungle role. Good early game tempo and early game jungling. So, good to see him get banned out of the way. As well as Rangar, is another one of those aggressive junglers who is normally a high mechanical skill cap jungle, but seeing him taken away, you know, he's one of those junglers. He can't take over the game, he can pop the uh, damage potentials, obviously. Craigsley don't want to deal with that. Trinomir, the next man, that seems an oddly specific man. Yeah, Trinomir, one of those champions, especially in a low elo game like this, can kind of run away with it. And you see Zoe banned out as well. Oh. <laughs> Big you're, rip. You're, you're kicking yourself a bit for that one. Yeah, but like if you don't know, Bobby's actually is like a Zoe one trick, pretty much. He's like his main champion. She's, he's been playing so well on that pick in his match history. He looks very, very strong. So to see that get banned out is quite thing. The Scion up. Is I like Scion. I like Scion on Taj. Yeah. As we identified before, Taj is one of those players who might struggle a bit. He's considered one of the lower elo players on the Mercy Door side. Scion is a nice safe pick. All you have to do is sit there and farm, try your best not to die, and you're going to become relevant in the late game. That said, Darius is a super strong pick into Scion, and the Vlaxen will lock it in for Craigslist. Yeah, he's definitely going to have to try to win that matchup very hard. Oh, I don't like that. You don't like the Ezreal? No, I mean, Ezreal, this patch got nerfed super hard when they got rid of the double tier build. <laughs> um, so Ezreal is not one of those champions you can kind of take a lane and be safe and poke and just scale at two items anyways. The fact he's got no double tier means he's not getting as much damage out of that mirror mana and he has to go full AD now as well. You I mean, you can still kind of go for that gun, but if you want to spice it up, but it's going to go back to the um, Blade of the Ruin King traditional full AD build, which isn't as strong as it used to be. And I think there are much better AD carries available in the meta compared to the Ezreal. I well, like this. League of Legos locking in the Amumu. It's <laughs> another simple jungler. Sadly, Sun, easy to play, strong gank potential. Very, very strong mid game and another yeah. frontline beefy tank. So it does look like they're setting up for to perhaps play around Boofy Ooh. and Bobby. Bobby hovering the Zed right now. That would be an exciting pick. Will it be locked <coughs> in? I mean, Zed blind is very risky. I like the Kaiser here a lot yeah. more. Kaiser is a lot more flexible and they will lock it in. Yeah, nice. So it does look like they're building for a protect the Kaiser comp on yeah. the side of Maruchidor. Craigsley now hovering. I'm sure all of you are noticing those summoners right now on Sapnu. I, that Olaf? might be a. <laughs> but yeah, you take better. Olaf so could be a Hecarim. You don't take Ghost anymore, though. <laughs> but at the moment, we're hovering the Lissandra. Yeah, Lissandra, of course, very safe mid laner for Zaho. Obviously, gonna go in blind, really strong blind pick. Still one of the strongest. <laughs> Champions in the meta has a still like a ridiculously high ban rate. Um, yep. But 
you know, the majors that um, Booty, bo sorry, Bobby plays, like the Syndra and the um, Oriana, are really strong into the list. So could potentially be looking to ban out some of those champions here for Bobby, yep. or else that's a really nice matchup he can get into the Sun. Well, they're actually going to get rid of Snoopy Zillion. Uh, or, or mid lane Zillion. More mid lane Zillion. Jackson played it this week and beat that, TL. That's true, that's true. Uh, just again, looking at the match history, Snoopy had been playing a bit of that Zillion. So I believe that is a targeted ban, as the next ban will actually be Hecarim. So Hecarim off the board for Sap. Yep, they probably saw the Ghost in the Summoners and went, no, you're <laughs> getting any, uh, any Hecarim, even though you don't take Ghost in the jungle yep. on anything anymore because of the Predator rune. I don't know how much we can learn Maybe from Maybe we can see Skarn, actually, because Skarn is still really strong after it got the crypto, Crystal Scepter buffs. Well, we're not going to be seeing Akali. I don't think we should be expecting be much Kali. out of these summoners because if you take a look as well, Bobby currently has Smite, and I yeah. doubt we're going to be seeing that Smite yeah. in the mid lane. This is why you don't scout summoners ahead of time. Uh, it's you can't see me big anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah true, true. Summoners, but yeah, I mean, I do like the. I mean, I, I, the Akali ban. I'm not too sure about since you know the Scion's locked in. It's very likely this Scion is going to go onto the top side, and the Scyander is a hard counter pick to the Akali. So I think living it up is actually okay. All right, Leona though is a very nice ban. I do like that. Yeah, Lamster not going to be able to play Leona. It would have been a good pick for them because it's some gap close, it's some initiate. If you can get that onto the Kai'Sa that they're trying to protect, it's easier to shut her down. However, not available this time, although Alistair is still up. Yeah, Alistair Kai'Sa is one of the strongest lanes in the mm -hmm. game, able to get two stacks on. I like the Warwick here from uh, Snow Plus. It's yeah. very easy to play. Oh! <laughs> of course nah, that would get a reaction definitely out not, of us. Definitely not. Surely they don't pick Aurelian. No, yeah, there no. We go. There's the syndrome. <laughs> that makes more sense. The syndrome will be locked in for Play with my heartstrings, boy. <laughs> Oh, I, don't, I mean, Lulu's decent here. That's definitely a hard protect comp. A two yeah, carry hard protect comp. Mumu Sign in the front line there. Obviously, Syndra in the middle until the Sandra is a very strong matchup as well. Braum Ezreal's a decent matchup. Yeah. But I, I don't know. Ezreal's just not strong enough to punish the, uh, the Kaisa really in any of these lanes. Yeah, I think the positioning from Plungy Boy, if he is on that Ezreal, is going to have to be very, very critical, as well from Lemistar in order to protect that Ezreal in order to get sustained Pokin. Yeah. On that, Kaisa, I feel like Boofy Crackers should please be able to play it safe. Warwick. Please, please don't take Ghost on Warwick. You have your W, you have a free Ghost. <laughs> I beg, I beg you don't take Ghost on Warwick. Oh, I think we're going to be seeing a Ghost on Warwick. Oh. I'm excited. I'm excited for Speedy Wolf Boy. Let's bring out the Speedy Wolf Boy. He's already boy. Speedy Wolf. He's, a, he's an ability that makes him go faster than the Ghost And he's going to go out there and he's going to build Yomus. He's, he's going to get a righteous fast. glory. And he's just going to... He's going to ultimate halfway across the map. Exactly. I am. I mean, I have done an ultimate from uh, the blue buff to the enemy nexus, which was pretty fun. Oh, yeah? On full movement speed Warwick. That was fun. That would be... I went in practice to a three crowd drakes. You got yep. the uh, Elder Dragon as well and just... Phew. Well, we, hey, if Sapnu can pull that off, then it makes it all worth it, right? That, that's what he needs to do. I mean, I suppose so. That said, though, when looking at these team comps, Maruji Doris definitely played the more straightforward team comp here. It's a Protect the Kai'Sa comp. You have Peel. You have a little bit of Dive if Syndra can hit those stuns. Uh, obviously, Snoopy has the ultimate reserve purely for Boofy Crackers and no one yeah. else. Whereas Craig's Lee's team composition it's a bit trickier, I feel, to pay off. Yeah, I, I think there's a very clear win condition. They've got the Kaiser, the mid laner, the two carries. They've got all the tanks that can sit in front of them, and the Lulu, of course, to buff up the Kaiser as well. Yeah. Very similar play. I mean, the only issue you can see with the comp is not... I mean, I guess, like, the Moo is very hard engaged, and it's easy to stack up the Kaiser Plasma. Yeah. Um, so that's really, really good. Depends how good the Syndra is as well. If she can land a multi-man stun, that's a lot of... Um, uh, Plasma yeah. stacks for the yeah, Kaiser exactly. to jump to. I think that, that comp in general is much better, much easier to play. Uh, versus the Darius comp, which is kind of a bit... There's this not that same win condition. Yeah. No flash on the jungler either means the Warwick uh, doesn't have as many... Like, you don't really have any engage, pure yeah. forms of engage on the side of um, Craigsley. They don't have the uh, flash in with yeah. the fear from the Warwick. They don't have uh, anything except the ultimate. Uh, or the Lissandra can't really go yeah. in by herself either. Obviously, she can when she has ultimate up, but that's very cool. Uh, Cooldown reliant as well. I feel like Craig's Lee is really going to have to play sort of a guerrilla warfare style because yeah. I do like Darius and Nissan. I think that's going to pressure that top lane and that could disrupt what Marichidor yeah. wants to I do. Agree, yeah. As well as the fact that they can, it, like if we start seeing skirmishes, mm. That's going to be very much in Craig's Lee favor as well. So if they can get those deep wars in there, get the picks before Maruji Door can start yeah. grouping and maybe build a snowball. Don't put Maruji Door in a position where they can feel like they can start to group yeah. as five and start pushing that. Then Craig's Lee has a serious chance because Cra Craig's Lee pretty much have to win before the twenty-five minute mark. Before the sign yes. gets to once the sign is uh, gets his uh, you know items and he can't be killed by Darius anymore, mm -hmm. it's pretty much game over from there because that makes the Darius pick irrelevant. 
Darius is really bad at engaging if he doesn't have his flash up. He's also taking, I think he's taking Ignite as well. In the yeah, top so, side. so it's, I mean, the, the way they have to win is Warwick has to hard camp top lane. They have to put this Scion behind, behind enough that Darius can get a lead, push it to a different lane, and win exactly. through that way. Because you can't just win through Darius, but push alone, because exactly. he just gets out and out muscle. Exactly. I feel like, yeah. And but, carrying on from that too, if they can get their mid laner ahead as yeah. well, get Lissandra to start harassing the Amumu mm -hmm. in his own jungle as well. I think that's, that's very difficult to do, though, just because yeah. of the way that Warwick. I mean, Warwick wins the jungle matchup because Warwick's <laughs> one of the strongest jungles early with press the attack. I just, the ghost is kind of like just weakens his champion as a whole. It doesn't mean you can't get in as much. Um, the one thing that they do have on their side though is again that that um, the Sandra is the Ezreal Braum is a very safe bot lane. Yes. Uh, the Braum especially means you can definitely look for some hard engages with the Ezreal yeah. Q, which stacks up his uh, frostbite as well. <laughs> um, so you can definitely look to get some kills through that lane. Uh, if you can lock down the Lulu stunner up, you can't get the. Um, any abilities onto the Kai, so I could potentially look for something down the bot lane before the Kai can get scaling. Yeah. But I think once the once the Infinity Rage Blade comes in for Kai, if Maruchidor aren't like at minimum six thousand gold behind, I think yeah. it's going to be almost impossible for Crazy to take yeah. that. Yeah, the Ezreal pick is a question mark for me because, like I said, it's a very safe bot lane, but I don't feel like safe is what they wanted. I would have no. been much happier seeing something like Alice or Draven. Yeah, something sure. with a lot of kill possessor or Braum Lucian. You had especially, the Braum. especially to go with the Darius as exactly. well. Exactly, something that would have pushed the advantages yeah, really. And Lucian is one on. of the strongest champions on the patch and was still. Yeah. Left up as well. It was still left up, so I would have um, Braum Lucian in that bot lane. Yeah, I feel like Craigslie would have been able to just play more aggressive and really push those early. I mean, yeah, because like I mean, the other thing is like, in one of these games though, there's highly potential for Darius to get his ultimate um, resets mm -hmm. off in one fight and just absolutely blow up the enemy team and turn a game around. That is so true. The, the Darius is one of those picks where if he has his flash up, he flash ults on one of the carries, gets a kill, can reset mm -hmm. it, get the AOE fear, and pop all five of them with his bleed stacks could potentially take out the entire team and really turn the game around. But I just think Maruchi Duel's comp so much easier to execute, and I have faith in these two Platinum mm -hmm. carries uh, yes. for Maruchi Duel that the Syndra and the Kai'Sa can position well enough to be able to take out this entire game. And also, they have a very favorable matchup in the middle lane with the Syndra all the time. He has the best username in the game, and the game is going to be in his hands. Boofy Crackers. Ruchi Dor is on your shoulders right now. Can you pull it off? The one last thing that I want to point out, though, which, again, going back, another way for Craig's lead to possibly shut down Boofy yeah. is with the Warwick Ultimate. If that can get yeah, course, onto yeah. Boofy. But once he gets a QSS, it's going to be hard to do that as well. If and you've got the Polymorph from Lulu. True. I mean, yeah, so there are ways. There's just so many tools to disengage and keep this Kaiser alive. Mm -hmm. But if the, yeah, if the Warwick can land an isolated ult, they can burst him down quick enough. Yeah. Uh, there's a for sure a way for them back into this game. They've got a lot of fears on their side as well. Oh. So I think, you know, there is definitely, like, the Warwick and Darius are really crucial. And how will they go during this early game? Yep. Is how well Craig is going to have a chance of winning this game? I almost kind of wish actually the mid laners were swapped around. And we I think saw so. Syndra well. yeah, yeah, yeah. on Craigsley and the Lissandra on Rooney. Yeah, those early that lane would have priority. actually. You've got to try to dominate the lane early carries and then kind of spread your lead around as well. I just don't think they've got enough like enough hard winning lanes. They've mm -hmm. only got the Darius Sion matchup, which still is 50 50 because it's like you're killing a Sion. At some point, he's going to get two items. At some point, he's going to get some armor. At some point, he's going to become unkillable. And at that point, what do you do with your lead yeah. when you can only abuse one character when your other lanes are falling behind? Exactly. It's just, I, Merchidor, it's all on Boofy. But if Boofy goes down, though, like even if that front line is not going to die, it's not going to be doing much. And you got a right Syndra there as well. It's going to one. Yeah, Syndra. Yeah, when, and a Moomoo. If you're full AP and Moomoo, we could see. Oh. oh, we could see it as we are loading into the rift. Here we go. Once again, it's Maruchidor on the blue side. Craig's Lee on the red side. Week four of the Queensland League of Legends High School League here at the University of Queensland. And off we go. Champions running out of the fountain. Items are bought. Nothing out of the ordinary just yet. No, everything's got items, which is good. It's a positive to the improvement from <laughs> last week. We've got all items. We've got support items on the supports as well. So that's great to see from everybody involved. Warwick's got his Rejuve B, which I like to see. Mm -hmm. It's myself. My most played jungler is actually Warwick as well. Oh. So I'm quite familiar with the Warwick. Oh, he did take Flash as well. Thank God. Okay, yeah, okay, so there's a spectator, flash. spectator bug. Okay, never mind. You're a disregard all the ghost <laughs> things. They've got really decent engagement with the Warwick Flash. It means you can get ahead early. I want to see him maybe even start at the enemy blue buff and look at just vertical jungle here, take control of that top side matchup because the bot side matchup with Ezreal Braum is kind of irrelevant. There's nothing that the Kai Lulu can really do in that lane and as yeah. the and as the Warwick, all you want to do is focus around this top side and get your Darius really far ahead. So if you force the vertical jungling, it means that Amumu is going to be forced to stick around this bot side. Of course that means that Ezreal and Braum are in danger, but they're a very safe lane both with dashes back to each other. So if one of them gets caught out with flash, there's no way either of them can die. Unless of course they waste their cooldowns, but that's a story for another time. This so time. yeah, I, I definitely think Warwick wants to start blue buff here, or at least start at his red and force the Amumu into early into early vertical jungling. Ooh. I think if they jungle horizontally here, it's going to be much more difficult to get into a pause. Yeah, so we come into a pause. 
as that was going on, it did look like Craigsley was hoping for that death bush invade. It didn't really quite happen. Yeah. As Mercy Door was content to just sort of guard their jungle entrances. No real level one fighting. Neither of those team comps really, I feel, want to fight level one unless. Uh, I mean, they've got the Braum. Yeah, the Braum is one of the best ultimate level one champions. So maybe they could have been with somebody. They're pretty much done. So they could have gone for the invade, really. Yeah, I think they should have try to force an invade there potentially. Yeah. Um, but I mean, in these in these low early games, especially in solo queue as well, uh, I definitely recommend you don't go for those early invades. <laughs> it's much easier when you're learning the game just to play standard because once you know the game standard inside and out, then you can start. In, like once you get, if you go for one of those riskier plays and it doesn't play off, generally you'll find in low early once you go for a cane, like the cane thing where you yeah. start at their raptors and then try to steal their buff. If you muck that up, if you get killed, you get caught out, they take your jungle, then you're kind of behind the whole game, you don't know how to get back into it. But if you have a decent understanding of the basics of the game, then you can start expanding and start going, right, I can adapt my path. Or you can ha use that lead, lead effectively, because you see many times in low elo where junglers do that, they triple buff yep. or quadra buff the enemy mm -hmm. jungler, and they just lose their lead anyways because they don't yep. know how to push it effectively. Can I make a counterpoint though to that of course. whole thing? Invading is fun. Invading is fun. Invading is a lot of fun, especially when you have, you know, your pre-made five and you know that other team isn't expecting yeah. it. And playing around it, you know, oh, taking the Braum or the Blitzcrank. There's a hundred percent definitely time to do the invades, you know, Brisk Camp Braum when you get a catch. And there's huge leads you can take off it. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the risk versus reward for players at this kind of level yeah. is kind of too much to outweigh. It. But it's obviously fun. Great viewing yes. at home. <laughs> I, it, you know, if they do do it, I'm here to entertain, right? Oh, I don't yeah. really care so much about the wins or losses. Uh, when I'm casting a game, yeah. of course. So yeah, no, go for it. go for those invade, go for those high impact plays. And it all comes down to I feel like if you do want to do it, it comes down to I feel who's your jungle and who's yeah. your support. Something like exactly. Morgana and Elise invade because you're gonna hit someone, you're gonna <laughs> shut them <laughs> Once down. Once you learn one bit of CC, it's all game. It, it is for them. done. So that that's sort of what my team likes to do. That's something yeah. we like to run. <laughs> a little bit of uh, of course, as we are yeah. just waiting for the uh, Paul sign to finish down some technical difficulties uh, on mm -hmm. one of the ends of the schools. Yep. Don't know how long it's going to be for, but we can maybe even start a little podcast going. Yeah, Good. maybe maybe we can get some questions, by the way. If you have some in the Twitch chat, please throw them our way. We will be starting in about two minutes, though, so got to make them quit. Or, oh, surprise, we're, we're starting right now. Make sure you guys spam in chat as well. Who do you think is going to win? You yep. spam uh, Chis uh, Maruchi Door. What are we going to get? Uh, M-A-R for Maruchi Door and C-A-R. C-R-A. C-R-A? For, uh, I just say just for Craig. Just spell Craig. Go Craig, Craig. Go. Craig, Craig, go Craig, go. Go Craig, go. Spend whichever school you're from in the chat. See who's going to win and get your predictions in early now. Yep. Oh. Uh oh, we might be like having another little pause. Boys. Oh no, we're all good. Okay. A oh, heart beating a bit, but no, the game is underfoot. Uh, we didn't miss any action, quite obviously. As all we six yes from Alessandra as well. Yeah, it's so very good, impressive. Good start from Zaho. Uh, junglers not really doing anything too surprising. And Mumu went straight from the red buff to Raptors. Cool, is now looking to go to Wolf as Warwick is going to get the bot side scuttle uncontested. Nice. I mean, I do definitely think the, the as you're, the, sorry, the Amumu can't contest the Warwick early. He's got press the attack, he's got the fear as well. So it's very hard for the Amumu to come and contest that with only, you know, his stun. And obviously, Lissandra has priority as well. Uh, one thing I do want to draw attention to was a couple things. The rune choices. Uh, mm -hmm. Number one, uh, there's this new build coming out of the Orianas and Syndras in Korea where you take the phase rush versus the, instead of the electrocute or airy. Uh, it just means once you land your three abilities and autos, it gives you that extra movement speed to either escape a gank or chase an opponent down, especially when you're one of these more mobile mages such as the Syndra. Uh, that extra bit of movement speed is almost invaluable. Look at your Lego's falling Lego very low. Does not have smite. He does not have smite at the moment, so. He needs a scuttle grab. Like, yeah, he needs he to get that scuttle grab now, so he's going to fall massively behind. No, so he's going for a gank on the side. Yeah. Snap the pass, so kind of roaming down to the bot. There wasn't really anything there for him, and actually, that's going to put uh, poor Sapnu behind a bit because. Yeah, I mean, maybe she was walking to it, looking to invade the. Uh, as yeah. you can see, he knows Wolvik's hard bot side. He could definitely clear out that camp before he got there. Obviously, a bit low on health, but. Yeah, I don't think he's going to want to risk it being yeah. low on health. I just, I just really want to see this Wolvik pass the top side, try to get this Darius ahead in that lane. Exactly. Well, if he's going top side now, he's going to actually skip Wolves entirely to start working. I believe the he's going to Wolves not killing his own time. That would be cannibalism. Uh, Does he like, eat them? That's his, yeah, I what do you mean? Claws his Q is it called Jaws of the Jaws oh, of Zorn or something? Oh, that's like an that. uncomfortable thought. <laughs> 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 the bus, Mr. Vlaxation kind of starting to pull ahead in that top lane as we expected. Darius, obviously, the favorable matchup in there, has a solid 4 CS lead at the moment. Mid lane going even, bot lane going even, so. What we've expected to start, Moon mm. was actually back on the bot side now. I'm a little surprised by that. Didn't go for that scuttle bug on the top half of the map, no. which means Warwick should be able to get double scuttle. Which is huge for the Warwick and a, a big mm -hmm. mistake there from the uh, Moon, obviously. Uh, 
stuff to learn on in the future. I would, the other thing I'd like to draw on attention to the Rune is the pressy attack on the Kaiser. Uh, we've seen a Stormraiser rush come back for the Kaiser. Oh, here we so go. Game is happening in the mid lane. Stop new. Not going to be able to clear that, not wanting to blow. Sindra too far back. Yeah, anything. good positioning for Bobby. Yeah. Bobby kind of playing defensively, realizing that, you know, they don't really have that jungle priority just yet, so no reason to overextend and get caught out. Yeah, I mean, and going back to that Kaiser pick as well. So the uh, pressy attack is one of the... Uh, Runes we sort of come up when the AD carry changes first came out. The whole point of the press the attack is when you proc your Q, your Q procs it, and you get a huge burst of damage immediately. Uh, but you've seen this build pop up where you go fleet footwork, and that synergizes with the storm raises active, and you can rush the storm raiser. Oh, whoa! <laughs> you can rush, wrong you can, way there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, you can rush the storm raiser into your uh, Ginsu's rage bait and get your Q evolve almost immediately in the game. Super quick getting into Oh, here we go. Bandit Sauce does not connect on the Zaho, but it might not matter as there is serious damage there, but nope, able to claw its way to safety. Zaho will be fine. Yeah. As that was going on as well, something I kind of noticed happening in the bot lane, Plugin Boy is actually playing very aggressive. He's been on the mm. other side of the minion camp quite a bit, yet isn't really getting a huge CS lead as a result. In fact, they're still kind of shoved in. Yeah, I mean, with the Q, it makes it a little bit harder to CS on with the Ezreal. You might uh, not know to calculate damage correctly since you've got that little bit of a nerf. Obviously, you've got Klepto as well, so you will be starting to accrue, accrue, accrue sorry, a passive gold lead there. The Kaiser shoving them in, interestingly enough, to obviously double range into melee. Yep. Um, and Ezreal, of course, not having as much wave clear as the Kaiser. So it means Kaiser will have control over that lane early, but you know, once Ezreal starts to get his first item, before the Kaiser can get that rage, but it's going to be very dangerous for him. Also, like, I'm all very impressed right now with where Kaiser's positioning. He's been able to freeze his wave, wave quite successfully right where he wants it to be. Yeah. Yep. I mean, the, the Scion here is super safe, obviously knowing mm -hmm. that their biggest threat is the Darius. And mm -hmm. on the bot side, it doesn't really matter how far, you know, as long as the Kaiser can kind of stay relevant. Like the second, yep. as I said, like the second this Kaiser gets her two items, the second the Scion gets their two items, Scion's going to be unkillable. Kais is going to kill everything, and it's going to be very hard uh, for Craigsley with no real hard forms of engage to kind of force a team fight and push that early lead. They've got through this team comp. Slungy boy, again, stepping up aggressive, trying to get some poke down on the Boofy Crackers, not quite connecting, not quite getting the damage that they want. It's going to be really hard for them to get that solo kill in that bot lane, so I'm not surprised that Boofy is playing it safe. It's just, I don't know, they're playing so aggressive, I feel like, in the bot lane from Craig's lead that something is going to happen there. I'm a little worried they're going to get burned if League of Legos decides to roam up. I mean, they can though, right? Because they've just got the Braum, so once they start <laughs> setting up those Frostbite stacks or Winter's, yes. no, yeah, well, Winter's Bite stacks, it's very difficult for um, the, the Lulu to really trade back at that range. I think the Ezreal Q is such, like, 62 range or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's all about just trying to push these early leads and trying to force stuff early before this team one comes online. Yep. I like honestly, I expect this game to go. If if, if Maruchi to win, I think we'll be looking at about a 33 minute game. If Craigsley win, it'll be like a 22, 23 minute game. So it's going to go one way or the other. So it's going to swing really hard to Craigsley. It's going to be a long drawn affair, and then Maruchi is going to come home really strong. Taking a look at the map, actually, Snap New Pass is looking for that mid lane gank. The snare is there. The question is, can Bobby get away? But a pause stops the action. I should point out, I don't know how successful this gank is going to be. Flash he's, he's is still available for He's definitely E'd way too early. He's that, that, yeah. the, um, the fear there is coming way too early. It depends if he has Flash. If he flashes on her with the E, obviously. She's currently stunned up by the uh, Lissandra ultimate, yep. the Frost Prism. Frost Prism? Yeah, Frost Prism. Frost Prism. Yeah. So, I mean, the Syndra didn't take Cleanse as well, actually. I probably should know that. You, when you're yeah. playing against Lissandra, you 100% take Cleanse 100% yes. of the time because she's got just easy stackable CC. And if you don't have Cleanse, there's no way to escape that all in. So exactly. it could be death there for the Maruchi to admit It could be. I still see that flash Flashes available. Up, though, but so. I don't know. I feel like if you flash for you with Lloyd, I think he's pretty much dead by that point. Yeah, as there we go. We're back oh, into it. And you can it. see right there, Bobby is already low. And there it is. That first blood going over to Zaho. Didn't really quite see how it went down. It does appear that the ultimate was used. So first blood going over to Craigsley. There you go, the or, uh, sorry, the Syndra didn't use any cooldowns, probably flashed in from the war. No, no, even flash just ran in yeah. with the W. No flash is burned by the, Sorry, yeah, the blood hunt on the W from yep. Warwick gives him, I think, 66% bonus movement speed towards enemies below 1 third health. Uh, so that's a very fast wolfy boy to yes. come in and uh, to lock him up. Lock in that kill. It surprised me, though, that Bobby was unable to use flash. I feel like should have tried to CC flash over that wall. He should have just taken cleanse. It's cleanse yeah. would be all good. Cleanse flash would have been fine. Unfortunately for Bobby, bit of trouble early. But this is what Crazy needed. They started. They needed to start getting this gold lead. They need to start pushing some advantages. They have a 1K gold lead eight minutes into this game. Uh, jungle priority is still kind of theirs. Although I do have to admit, League of Legos has been doing a good job farming. And once again, Taj kind of throwing that axe the wrong way and then doing a little dance to celebrate. I <laughs> He's uh, having he's, fun! He's We're having fun he's in having the top lane. having a good lane. time. We see uh, the uh, minion comes in. I feel like Laxation probably took a bit of offense to that fun. Leave it to Darius to say no fun allowed. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, especially he's going to be careful in this lane state. There's a high potential for the Woik to come in here and start punishing this far push up position. There's a freeze almost coming on here for uh, the Darius, and San's going to make sure he breaks it, which he does. Yeah, that said, if you take a look at the map and you take a look at the vision, Taj's the river is lit up for the yeah. side of Maruchidor, so Taj is going to be quite safe. Sapio still might be Wolfie going for here, it, though. and once again, and <laughs> throwing that Q backwards. I'm not has, sure. Has You're probably available. regretting it now. It's going to have to flash, and the ultimate is going to be used to get away. Actually draws out Sapio's ultimate as well. A bit of a misplay from the jungler from Craigslee. You yeah, can't stop Zion once he starts. Well, I mean, you can, but you got to get in front of him. But yeah, no, yeah, of course, the ultimate not being burnt, then maybe you should have flashed and then altered mm -hmm. back onto the... But I think at that point, once you're that close to your tower as a sign, you got the flash out already. Yeah. No need to expend any more cooldowns. That's a huge cooldown there. He's going to have to walk up for the wave anyways. Darius gets to shove it in. Uh, since the sign is forced back yep. to lane. We'll have to build a TP here to keep up that lane position as well for the sign. Since it's in a really good spot for him right now. Bit of a misplay from Darius back in so early. Yeah, I would like to see Darius it all the way. Still way. sitting in base. That's it? Ooh. Flungy boy actually getting quite aggressive on the Boofy Crackers, but again, Boofy Crackers not even below half health is able to destroy Boofy take Crackers. Back. What a great name! I love Boofy. Boofy Crackers is definitely the name MVP. Is oh, here comes Zahu. He's going to be able to snare too. The Entomb comes down as well as the Ezreal, but it's not quite enough damage to secure a kill thanks to Lulu just enlargifying the mid laner right there. As Sapnu is going to come through, clear some wards, not in time to really help in the fight. So. Good reactive play by Ruruji Dor to stay alive. Yeah, the wild growth makes it so hard for them to get through this huge shield, huge shield plus health bonus onto the uh, mm -hmm. carry once you get that wild growth from the Lulu makes it almost impossible uh, for him to get taken down there. But decent yep. play from Zahu, good roaming off his priority and interesting to see such a big lead here yep. against Bobby. That said, too, it will lead into a Air Drake as well. Right now, Craigslee has complete control. We kind of saw Bobby taking a peek, doesn't want to do it. And Taj, I think, has decided to stop sort of having fun in that lane. It's Trying to use his uh, Q more effectively going forwards this time. Yeah, pointing the Q at the enemy champion, that's a good place to start. Don't hit it away from anything. You want to <laughs> at least hit something when you channel that ability. Exactly. Uh, that said, his wave is now going to be pushing actually into the Vlaxation, which is a bit of a surprise, especially when he's down CS. You don't really want that. I'm sure Taj would rather have that wave frozen in front of his own tower. Most definitely. He wants to sit back, try not to die to this Darius, and I think it's just... It's a very nice controlled Ooh. game from both these sides. They're both playing... Um, you oh, know, Marichu will definitely Legolos connects with the bandage toss as well as the curse of the sad mummy comes down. Oh, Stunned yeah, against yeah, the wall. Yeah, there you go. Finally, Marichu gets on the board. Bobby Shirunda picking up that kill. Yeah, the Winter's Claw from the uh, Lissandra that came out a little bit too early. Um, <laughs> you're rooted and then you're been uh, altered by the uh, Amu there, so you can't really move at oh, all. Oh, Boofy's low. Boofy could be in a bit of trouble. It'll be interesting. Brom deciding not to use that. Wild ultimate, Growth it was is cool up, though. Wild Growth is up. Brom's ultimate was down, so Lemstar couldn't really follow up quite as well as he liked. That said, it does first. Boofy Crackers out of lane, and here comes Sampu. Pause. Looking for something cheeky here. Not going to be able to find it, but the Arcane oh! shot down for Oh, that is very unfortunate for Maruchidor as Plugin Boy. Picking up his first kill of the game. It's a huge mistake from the Kaiser backing there, but that's a really nice punish there from the Ezra using the uh, Arcane. Yeah, arcane Blast. Arc it's Arcane Blast? No, it's. Um, um, I had it. You just made me lose I it. just threw you off. My apologies. It's fine. <laughs> Anyways, the True Shot Barrage. True Shot Barrage. Came out and to take it down. There we go. There it is. There's Laxation <laughs> forcing out the ultimate. Unstoppable Onslaught from the Scion as well, knowing all the ability names. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Cast an easy clap. Q W E R. Because his Q and his W is ER, and that's his Control 3 going off there. Yeah, yeah. At the moment. <laughs> Another important oh, no. ability. Yeah, control 3, yeah. As Zaho and Bobby again kind of poking at each other. A lot of camera action going for the top side as Sapu Paws once again looking to possibly gank this mid lane with 30 by gold in the jungle. Oh, Ooh. nice cancel Black there from. Yeah. Well, this is looking very dangerous. No ultimate available either. No, so five Tosh stacks of bleed. Escape. And the flash board, he's going to go for that ultimate. The question is, will it be enough? But no, it is not. So we cut back to the mid lane. Ultimate suppresses Bobby. He's going to flash into no two by himself. Either. But Zaho is there to help get the kill. As well in the top lane, it did appear as the Black Station was able to bring down Taj Makatosh as well. So we are now four kills up for the side of Craigslee. Yeah, you know, the big top, the big fight up in the top side, and the, the uh, Syndra they got caught by the uh, Warwick into the Sandra ult. No cleanse on him again, so he instantly goes down. Big mistake not taking that sound, so that would have saved his left fly. And this is the start that Craigslee was almost certainly looking for. They're playing the more snowbally comp. They don't want to get to that late game. They need to start getting kills and get them fast. Build that gold lead as fast as possible. Four kills up at 13 minutes. Well, three kills up at 13 minutes. Four kills altogether. It's a good start. Big lead on the Ezreal as well here in the bot side, which is really what you needed, especially since he's a lot weaker now. He's still a decent champion. He still does a lot of strong damage and poke. If you're good with a champion, you can land those, those uh, uh, essence fluxes and the... Uh, 
Octane Missiles. It looks like he's going to be going Mana Moon and he's going to be Force, I reckon. So that could be Iceborne. So it's a little bit actually one. going down. Yeah. Oh, Ultimate point. actually knocking Boopy Crackers up. Oh, but the Wild, wild growth, growth is there to keep this is Kaisa alive. Boopy Crackers throwing a little bit of a Void Seeker back saying, that was annoying, I don't like you. Still sticking around quite low. Yeah, just surviving in that lane again from the Kaisa. Just wants to sit back, get those items, get to her IE and then start popping off. Misses the cannon as well, that's a real mm. full spam name. Not a good moment there as Luffy's really playing it risky right now. Fortunately though, Sapu Cause is on the top side of the map, so I doubt we're gonna see a dive really as Black Station. Once again, going to work on Mr. Taj Mekintosh. It worked the first time, can it work the second time? No flash to help Black Station out though, which means Taj should walk away safely. That is one of the problems with the Darius, of course, no phase rush on him, the Conqueror. Looking for that tank trading build, as you should against the Sion, means that once he walks away from you, it's very hard to keep on him and stick on them as the Darius. Um, but I feel like Black Station has one lane already, though. He doesn't really yeah. need too much more. He's already He's very 35 far farm up. <laughs> Taj, once again, aim in the wrong direction. And yeah, so you're 35 CS up, you're a kill up. This is the position Darius wants to be. Any other extra kill at that stage, I feel, is just like another cherry on top. Yeah, I think so. I mean, the Darius is very far ahead, about 30 CS up that lane. CS is almost across the board here mm -hmm. uh, for Crazy, which is really nice to see, especially in this bot side here. It means that pretty much every K of gold they're up gives them an extra minute of time where they can potentially take out the game before Maruji will have the chance to come online. That said, though, the one place where I feel the gold is actually in, the va in favor of Maruji Door is a bit of a surprise. League of Legos has just been hard farming, it feels. Uh, Sap through Paws has been trying to make the plays. Not all of them have been successful, so jungle going actually quite even. I mean, I think the Amumu has been doing quite a bit as well. So you got the Akil in the mid lane for the Syndra. I do think the Amumu is definitely much further ahead in tempo of this Warwick. Um, I think that's mostly because Warwick's passing early was. Uh, quite Ooh. poor. Bandage um, toss not connecting there, but it looks like League of Legends is going to go for it regardless. It was ensnared for a bit, but Zaho's going to have to use the claw to get away over to safety. Sapu Paws was there to provide help, but oh, Winter Spite just missing. Bobby Cracks has been oh, right on that. So that low. Is huge. A timeful polymorph, though, is able to keep Boofy alive. And the True Shot Barrage just going wide yep. as well from the Ezreal. You're going to get those skill shot accuracy up, boy. <laughs> and the Kaiser survives once again. Oh, Zaho could be in trouble. League of Legos on the back. <laughs> it's actually going to gonna chase the claw. It doesn't want to let Zaho escape. Cool. That is uncool. Oh, no, but the, the bear is so great, But it doesn't matter. The stuff is Oh, coming. there Bobby we go. Ruda Vivo picking up his second kill of the game. Just Ruchidor dumping his unleashed power him. all over Lissandra's face. Absolutely just going, here are my balls. Take them to your face. As so much damage coming out of the scene. Bot tower going to fall as well for Craig's Lee. As all this was going on, we saw Boofy got chunked out before, which does equal a the tower. The Q was in the right Lee. direction. <laughs> the Q was in the right direction, but Black Station punishing Taj. Every time, every time that Q goes the right way, Black Station punishes. But every there time we the go. Q goes the wrong way, <laughs> Black Station just seems to ignore Taj. <laughs> I think I think we figured out why he's doing it. So, yeah. Like that's just his strategy. It's a reward. I, yeah, it's a reward for him. Like, I'll give you a nice high five with my axe to the face because you landed your key the right direction. <laughs> It's, it's He's like, new. I like your axe, but mine's bigger and does more damage. Sap new, looking to get a bit of uh, the dragon vision right there with the scuttle bug. Air Drake, the next dragon. Obviously, Craigslee is going to want that. They're going to want as many dragons as possible. Try to keep that away from Marusidor to maybe mitigate the late game should it come to that. Not to mention, hey, more movement speed equals easier to get those picks in the jungle. I would like to start seeing some deep wards come out of Craigslee. Yeah, for sure. They want to start taking this advantage they've got in the bottom, which is really what we highlighted. They need to get an advantage in more than just the top lane. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a big potential here to come and take these skirmishes during the mid game while Lissandra is really, really strong. Yep. and potentially look to take out Murchidor. Well, they do intend to be getting that Cloud Drake at the moment. As you can see, the team is converging on it. Lungy Boy getting started. I also want to see Black Station get that top tower down. Like, it, it, he can do that now, and it will just really help enable Snap New to start getting in those, like, I mean, I suppose so, but the top lane is just one of those objectives that's very weird. Most of the towers on the top lane don't really give you a smack Oh, aggressive play from Zahu, actually. Kind of putting oh, in a bit of trouble. Well, 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 they're coming down, but here's just like, Legos. Oh, the Bandit Soft doesn't even hit a minion, however, so no chance for a re-engage as no one will fall this That time. is all of Lissandra's cooldowns burnt along with the flash as well. So yeah. huge investment from Lissandra for no real gain. And that's a big benefit there from Ruchu is still exactly. trying to come back to this game. Flash on Bobby still available. Flash on Legal Lego still available as Funky Boy is actually going quite aggressive. Bobby Crackers with Killer a flood of the support. But no, Snoopy is the only one who Killer takes a bunch of Brawl and they can't seem to decide what time oh they want. In God. the end they settle for Snoopy and Snoopy will fall. Bobby Crackers should go next. It is a double kill for Funky Boy and a huge advantage for Crankly. So much damage coming out of that Brawl when you land the frostbite mm -hmm. down there, Ezreal just chunked out the Lulu. And then there you go, you don't know, no wild growth, no killer instinct out of the Kaiser either. Both of the characters holding onto their flash and they'll go down to the duo. 
in the bot lane from uh, Craigslist. Yeah, and then, you know what I'm saying about like the top lane, how we want to bring this tower down? I want to see the lane swap. I want to throw Plungy Boy and Limstar top. Agree, Start pushing yeah, those objectives. Sure. That would be the correct way, I feel, to do it. And they certainly can at this thing. I mean, I think they should actually throw the mid lane, force the Syndra into the side lane, because Syndra's one of those champions who really struggles when she's not in that mid lane. Uh, like the Orianna, generally you'll play them if you're ahead on that side to get your bot lane into the top lane. But if they can move the Ezreal into mid, force the Syndra to a side lane, it's a huge advantage that Lissandra has as one of those champions that functions quite well into a side lane. Ooh, you got these Rift Herald as well, yeah. it's really important to get that mid tower down. It's a very late Rift Herald, but it is not warded by Maruchidor, which means Craigslee should be able to pick this up quite easily. And yeah, that will help get that mid tower down. Maybe they'll use a top, but I do think it'd be smarter to use it in the mid lane. Oh, they did get buzzed. Bottom Shrimp is going to step forward. Get oh, the stun. stun. He's going to have to steal the answer. No, because he's going for the kill instead. Laxation is one or two hours away from nice. death, and down he goes. But that is Snapu who has something to say about. The target is Bobby, but the counter engage is there, and it's actually going to be Snapu who falls next. Plug in Boy trying to do what he can against League of Legends. He's going to flash forward, drop the curse of Sad Mummy. The next target is actually Zaho, who somehow stays alive from the Cinder Sun. League of Legends is on the run. Fortunately, Taj is there to try and oh. slow that counter engage. Lemstar throwing at that shield, blocking for Plungy Boy. He's getting so much damage down onto Tosh, who has the flash, but it's not going to be enough. Kill secured by Plungy Boy, and in the end, that is Craig's Lee. They lose two, they got the Rift Herald, they got one on return. I don't know, that was pretty even to me. How did Lissandra not go down then? Picked up the Rift Herald as well for the red side. It's a huge advantage to Crazy. Even though the 2v2 was really good from Ruchita, who are behind, they've got an even trade. Don't get any shutdown, don't get any bounties. The Ezreal 4 and 0 on this pick with the Iceborne completed as well. Yep. Looking to build towards that Blade of the Ruin King next is absolutely humongous. But this Kaiser getting free time on the bot side as well to kind of catch up. Hasn't even finished that IE yet. And you know, this game is going to look closer and closer as we get further on. And these team fights when both these comps come into their own. Exactly. At the start of the game, we did say, you know, skirmishes would probably favor Craig Lee. That time, it did favor Craig Lee, but it was very, very close. And that should. I mean, light the Darius was like 1% one, one HP. But when yeah, no, started, when it started so. because of the Rift Herald. So take that one with a grain of salt. And Plungy Boy's positioning and playing behind Lemonstar was spot on. Yeah, I mean, so. really impressed with the Israel's play so far this game. I thought, you know, Israel's one of the champions. Obviously, got nerfed quite heavily. And I think against Boofy Crackers, he looks like a very good uh, AD carry on paper when you look at his solo queue history. Yes. Um, well, you know, I expect him to outclass. Class, the uh, Pogby boy and, and Limsa, but they really hold their own here in this lane. That Ezreal uh, Brawling, one of those very strong, strong lanes, and Snoopy, of course, on the Lulu doesn't really offer anything until much later into the game. Yep. So they're definitely using that window they have for that. Oh, oh here we go. Snapu might have been like going in a bit too cheap, or never mind. It's actually poor Bobby who's caught out position. That has three members from Craig's Lee Strong. Easy kill picked up going over to Zaho. I believe that is his second of the game. Yes, it is. As we head back to the top side, it looks like Vaxlation has finally decided it is time to bring this tower down. He's going to ignore the damage, but maybe he shouldn't have because League of Legos is there. Zaho coming up from behind, trying to make a save onto this area. It's a little bit of life goes back. Double stare, pull the oh. They're Going for a bit of a wobble, but Black Station is so low, I don't think they can commit to this League of Legos as actually running for his life. Darius does fall, but League of Legos does survive. Banning Sauce goes back in, and Zaho is actually the one who falls. League of Legos, how is oh, he still alive? Like, finally, he falls. Braum able to help secure that kill. It's actually a double going over to Snapu. Lot of deaths, I believe that was two aside for each team. So once again, they're going even in these fights, Three. but the tower still stands. Three deaths. Oh, well, I mean, two, oh, two, two, two in that little the skirmish, but the yeah, middle is gone as well. I mean, Zoho just getting caught there by the bandage shots just to the end of the yeah. take it down. So well from oh both these carries. Bobby but. chunked down to half just from one. Oh, little Ezra does so much damage. So <laughs> much damage right now to this Kaisa. It's two and a half items to half an item, yeah. basically. So, I mean, the Ezra items are a lot cheaper, to be fair, but this is just really struggling, super far behind and gone. She really needs to wait and catch up. Yeah, I mean, it's, you've got to farm where you can, what you can. I mean, I, I did say if, if you know, Marushi don't want 6k ahead, it was 6k behind, sorry, by the 20 minute mark. It's going to be so much more difficult for, uh, you know, the red side to actually ever win this game. And Craig's they've done exactly what they need to do in the draft. I've executed this early game comp. They're super far ahead now. And this taking down the damage onto the Kaisers. Oh, just wow. through everything. Yeah, has, Boofy's getting quite low. And here comes some oh, help from though. the side of Bobby. The question is, will oh, ever go down before go. Boofy? The answer is yes, because of the stun. Oh, the Syndra down took it. goes Mr. Plungy. Yeah, Syndra took the kill. Not quite what you wanted on. You'd rather that on Boofy. That said... As, uh, to carry on the point you were just making, this is the part where the game actually will start to get difficult for Craigslee, yeah. because they got themselves in the position to win the game, but now they actually have to finish. And finishing is going to be difficult against Marucci because they're going to be slowly getting more and more powerful the yeah. longer it takes for Craigslee to they, put this one gonna away. It's going to be really important for them to play around this Baron correctly. Uh, Baron Nash correctly. If they can play around the Baron effectively, maybe get a kill, maybe get the Baron themselves and secure it, set up their split push in the side lane with the Darius that's going to be shredding this Sion, who's you know, 40 CS ahead of, that's how they're going to win this game. If they can't execute around this Baron quickly and they stall out too long and Marucci can get their items, it's looking like very dire situations for Craigslee uh, and, you know, the yeah. high school overall. 
It's kind of why I'm actually kind of feeling like Maruchidor is not all doom and gloom right now. Like, they've already yeah. brought 1k back, so they're only down 5k when they were down 6k before that pick onto Plungy Boy. That said, it looks like they're going to lose their third Cloud Drake, so three Cloud Drakes going over to Craig's Very, very zoomy Woolwick Boy. Yeah, very zoomy. Oh, if only he still had his Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Righteous Glory in the Yomi's Ghost Boy. Yeah, that, 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 I mean, this was the game for it. A red buff is going to keep going over to Boofy, so they are giving it to... Has finished his IE as well. Got the Q upgrade as well with the pickaxe picked up. We'll be looking to finish off the E upgrade as well once he finishes the, uh, yep. the attack speed item thing. So, <laughs> yes. Attack speed item thing. Yes. Leave me alone. <laughs> the, the zeal item. Whichever zeal item Boofy decides to No, I mean the um, recover. Oh, recover. That's what I meant. Yep. But then I realized, oh, actually what? 35% from boots. Recover gives you 40? That's 30. I don't know. Uh, you would know that a bit more off the top of your head. That that's what it's called. Still throwing that really. axe the wrong way. I'm pretty sure it's 30. Is it? Wow, well, then he doesn't. Have... Oh, yeah, because you go Storm Razor, which gives you yep. 15 plus 35 plus that. Yep. That makes sense. Math is easy for me. Um, <laughs> yes, great. So. <laughs> I say these high schoolers probably could teach you a thing or two about math. Uh oh, it looks like oh. Snoopy was caught out. Zaho leading the charge, but the kill unfortunately going over to Lenstar, not quite who you wanted it on the as the fight will up. continue. Bobby is going to be stopped that re-engage, but Liga Legos might still want it. Nope, decides against it. No bad ninja shots despite Curse of the Thad Mummy still being up, and in the end, Crazily is going to back off. And yeah, the Glacial Fisher, uh, Fisher coming out of the just disengage that fight there. Yeah, good ultimate, but we're actually not quite done. Zaho oh, going quite aggressive. Root. The target is Bobby, but Bobby will stay alive as they don't want any part of Poofy Crackers, who is starting to lead the charge, as well as League of Legos. Like, that's the threat of the Curse of the Sad Mummy right now. Seems to be holding Craigsley back yeah. from committing fully. That was a great Ring of Frost there, getting onto two members, <laughs> almost chunking out Bomby Shmurdo. In fact, unfortunately, Ezreal just wasn't in position. The ultimate wasn't up ready to take advantage of that, but that could have been very dire for uh, Maruchidor. They were able to take down that Sidra. That would have meant that T2 went down in the bot lane there. Well, probably T2 in the mid lane as well, and that could have been a huge instant out of for Crazy. It would have still been. holding on at this point. Well, the, and top lane has become, you know, their own game. It feels for the past like five, six minutes. Not much time. Snoopy is again caught out, and that oh. damage from Plungy Boy is actually insane. Snoopy was just trying to clear some vision, get something back for the side of Maruji Door. Unfortunately, it is not their jungle at they the moment. They need to get this Kai out of the bot lane. They need to move around the map. He's getting camped down here with the Lulu. They're just getting pick, kick, uh, picked off too much. They can't control that vision uh, in the site, in that jungle there. So just getting killed again and again. And you know, this Lulu pick in particular is definitely something where I think you know, if that's an Alistair or Leona maybe yeah. as they you know ban down the draft, did the game would look there. entirely different. So I think they need to start looking to group up around the Baron, get the Kaiser into the mid lane, the Syndra clearing out the top side there and really start playing around this Baron Nasha and using their strength, to, the, the champions they pick strength in a team fight, five on five scenario. I think that's how they win the game. Exactly, but as it stands right now, no team actually has any vision on the Baron itself, although it does appear Craigsley has a bit more of that deep vision. Black Station is in a bit of a trouble here. Oh, that the damage cow. coming from Bobby is insane. The balls, they just want to so smack, smack. Just smack with them balls, man. Just yeah, even taking them down one by one. Not even Darius with his lack of any magic resist whatsoever can withstand that. No, of course, of course, the Juggernaut, very good into these assassiny type burst mages, but so much damage coming out from all three of them, they're taking down. Oh, actually going quite aggressive with dropping the uh, Hextech Proto Belt there. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to go for it. I'm surprised by that. That was a very aggressive proto belt play. It wasn't it's interesting to see him rush the Ludens, actually, because generally yeah. with Lissandra, you do struggle with mana. Generally, you build your proto belt first, but you get mm -hmm. the lost chapter to sort of sustain through lane. But he finished with Ludens and then went for the uh, the proto belt. So, interesting build. Still ahead of the Syndra. He went I, for I, the, uh, the phase rush um, spellbinder build. Yeah. Because you are spamming that Q down trying to get your stack up on your Unleashed power all the time. So. I mean, with this stage for the Lissandra as well, with both items completed, it doesn't matter the order. No, it doesn't stage. really. Um, that said, though, I'm confused by the lack of... Oh, now we're, it does appear that Black Station is going to be building some Merc Treads. Mm. I definitely feel MR should be prioritized actually a bit over the attack damage just because the yeah, yeah, Crackers sure. does do that mixed damage and Bobby is pure AP. Yeah. So I'm surprised to see Ninja Tabai I mean, come I mean, out. As well, yeah, it, yeah so I'm surprised to see actually Ninja Tabai coming out on Sap I, I feel like that... Yeah, I don't know. Part. I think that's just a just autopilot pick it up every game mm. kind of thing. I mean, I, the Kaiser is mainly AD Kaiser. She does do a little bit of mixed damage, but it's mostly going to be AD this game uh, with the Infinity Edge crit. So I can see why he's built that. But I feel like the threat at the moment is the Syndra. The Kaiser hasn't got online just yet. She probably needs to add another. I mean, it depends how much she gets back now, back with now, but it should be another like 2.3k gold. Yeah, I'd really say, which would be about 8 to 10 minutes, unfortunately. Mm. A little later. It needs that QSS as well. 
Yeah, the QSS has to be bought, so throw in another, you know, five minutes at that. It could not be until the 40 minute mark, perhaps, until Maruchidor. No, I don't, I don't think that long. Place. I think, I mean, she hasn't, Bufi hasn't backed in a good 10 minutes, so mm. um, it depends how much, if she can get that Rage Blade now, we'll get at least towards it. I think if she finishes recurve, like, she should be close. Yeah, she picks up the whole item there. So okay. once she gets a QSS, this is when it gets really dangerous for Crazy. Yeah. It makes sure they have to play around oh, this objective super carefully. Death bush has been set up. This is what you want to do. This is, you want to get priority in the mid lane. You want to sit in your control wards here. You want to bait them that you're on Baron. Force them to come and face check and then kill them with this Darius. Uh, because the Darius is going to really struggle to get into this team fight without that uh, face check. That said, yeah, I mean, they're trying to threaten the face check, although they were spotted with the ward just yeah. below the river right there. So Marigidor should know what Craigsley is up to. They're not going to go running in. Face they should first. just start Baron at this point. They're strong enough yep. to do it. The AD carries on the bot side, they can see them there in their wards. They should just start it. I mean, yeah, there's nothing loser, but it's never actually going to get cut. Oh, the, that is a lot. He's on the bloody he's able to stay alive. Zahu in the front line is also choked by low, but League of Legends is the target. Everyone's oh, running it, but the polymorph down onto the Brahmin. Brahmin is going to fall. However, Amumu does fall as well. Darius picking the kill. It's oh, but here goes Soyan going straight after so Zaho. Zaho so low, but unfortunately his dance fall isn't there because oh, the Bobby Boy line. goes down. Bobby Sharima is able to secure that kill. And in the end, it is two for one right now in the favor of Mushinor, but they're still running. They want more. Good start on Flaxation. He's choked quite low. Goofy Crackers is actually there doing quite a bit of work. Yeah, but it doesn't appear blade. that Maruchidor is going to want to follow up. So in the end, everyone will back off. Plungy Boy gets caught out, and all of a sudden Maruchidor. Pulls the trigger, they go for it. What Two a great hits. engage from the Amumu there. The main issue straight onto the AD carry, forces the E out straight away. Ooh. Held onto the flash as well from the Ezreal and the Bobby just flashing in to secure that last Q onto the uh, Ezreal, taking him down. And the Rage Blade coming in for Kaisa means he's so, so strong in these fights. And this is how you expect to see the rest of these team fights go. The five on fives are heavily in favor of Marujidor. Targe even coming in late, yep. that back line they're getting yeah, so that many was low carries, huge. Went and now they will Zaho. pick up their prize though. I, mean, I think they could probably go to Baron there to be honest with the Kaisa They the possibly Blade. could have. She absolutely shreds these objectives with that percent health on Kaisa Blade. You see the Ocean Drake disappears. Yeah, they possibly could have. Instead, you know, they're going to claim their prize as their first tower down of the game. They got the mid tower, first one for Marujidor, followed by an Ocean Drake. So it's not Baron. Baron play, they probably realized was maybe a bit too risky with those half health bars if someone had shown up and like made some outplays. They could have lost it, so I do appreciate the safe play there. That said, they didn't get any vision around the Baron Pit, so that same threat of Craigsley, you know, starting Baron uh, and taking it down under Maruji Door's nose, forcing that, you know, blind face bush check, uh, face check the death bush, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. still there. So it's not as if Maruji Door er, is gotten a huge advantage. Craigsley can still do the exact same thing. That said, it does look like Craigsley actually went more towards the bot half of the map as opposed to around Baron, which could lead to some trouble. A snappy pause? Nope. Okay, League of Legos prioritizes the blue buff as opposed to looking for that skirt. He's in vision as well on the control yeah. wood, but yeah, look, Craigsley are going to be very tricky now. They're, they've seen in the team fights in the 5v5, they really cannot win if that AD carry gets caught out. So this Ezreal's going to be focused on that positioning even more. They're still ahead about, you know, 4k gods. So they've still got a, uh, a couple more minutes to kind of sustain through this game. But as we get later and later, like, I see by the 40 minute mark, the gold lead becomes uh, almost irrelevant. And yeah. this Kais is going to absolutely shred once we've got that Zeal picked up as well. Yeah, so seeing the Zeal of the QSS, I'm not sure I agree with that. The Black Station has actually kind of cut out League of Legos, but not doing any damage to that poor yeah. little mummy. So. They're he's not he's, got, he's got his, um, what's that, Frozen Heart, so frozen 90 heart. armor on the yeah. Mumu, he's pretty much unkillable at this point. I'm curious um, why you would go Frozen Heart as opposed to... Because he's a Darius? <laughs> I guess, yeah, right, fair. fair. As opposed to, I mean, I don't know what it's, I used to be like Righteous Glory or something yeah, like that, but, you've got, you, but you've got the um, Curse of the Sad Mummies on a low mm -hmm. cooldown now as well. Uh, you get also bonus mana from the uh, Frozen Ooh. Heart. Just, it's just, it gives you the slowing attack speed as well. Yeah. Uh, so if the uh, Ezreal lands in a... Uh, I, I mean, mean we'll, Ezreal not really... Oh, there's no attack carry, speed. But. Yeah, there's no real attack speed champion. So that's kind of why I'm like, eh, on the Frozen Heart. No, I don't no. think that's... I mean, look. most of those Glacial Shard items are you know, pretty decent. There's just yeah. a lot of armor. It's a big amount of armor. There. Once he poaches in, he just, it is very hard to get to that 90 armor. Plus, he's got two claws sitting there as well. So. Yeah, and the manager is nice. It kind of looks like Craigslist is starting to group us five. They're trying to get that pick. Instead, they'll get the mid tower. I'd be happy with that. And I want to see him rotate up to Baron right now. Yeah, they do need, they need to still fight around Baron before this class gets any stronger. If she finishes that Runa in Hurricane, it's almost game over with that AoE Plasma stack being applied. It's going to be so, so hard for them to get through her. On hit as well. So, those, those are little bolts from the Runes are going to be applying two Plasma stacks to the carries they're hitting after the first two autos. Well, here we go. They have started to gather around the pit. They're sitting on pink right now. That death push. League of Legos is going to walk forward. See, the Baron it's has just, been just started. Just hit the Baron. The, the bot lane's in the bot side right yeah, now. They're so far away from the It's a huge mistake from Maruchidor. And crazy convincing he punishes the Baron. Yeah, they're going to get a Baron for free right now. Bot lane was seen. Out of position. Nothing to stop it. League of Legos is not willing to throw his life away for that Miracle Seal. No need. 
So with that, Crazy is going to get Baron, and they're going to look to Siege right now. How is the Siege potential, though, coming out of Crazy? It is actually quite strong. Obviously, Ezreal can just sit there and poke the traditional Siege comp. Obviously, Ezreal, Zoe, who are the two best Sieges in the game. Yep. Maybe the Caitlyn as well can be added to that, but that's just heavy poke from the back line. You can get the Darius and a Scyther, and I think that's a huge mistake from Maruchidor sending that bot lane down there to get that farm. She has got the Runans completed as well, but at this point, like, Crazy have to win this game off this Baron. If they can't yeah. win the game off the Baron, Maruchi will just take them out in um, seen fashion in these team fights because there's no way they can secure that next Baron because Maruchi will be way too strong to fight them. I am nervous though that Buffy did not pick up the QSS. So that does yeah. leave Buffy susceptible. That said, you know, you still have your Polymorph. You still have Bobby, you still have Legos, Curse Wild of Growth as well. In the, yeah, in Wild the, Growth yeah, as like well. The, 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 the tools are there, but yeah. I really would have preferred that QSS. Just 100%. To play yeah, you safe. should still pick up the QSS, get the life skill as well, make sure almost unkillable. Um, I, I, I'm assuming QSS is coming in really nice. Obviously, the, rage, the um, Rune Ends is a huge power spike for her, though. The thing is, is it going to be too late? Because if they lose this next same fight, they could lose the game. I, the, okay, the red team don't want to fight. They just want to push lane, mm -hmm. siege with Baron buff on cannons. They want to stack two or three cannons, get down the towers and disengage with the Braum as much as possible. They don't want to fight because they have very poor engage, which means yep. the, the blue side and Ritual will be choosing when to engage on them with a Scatter of the Week, for example, or a, you know, a Scion Ultimate on Unstoppable Force. And which is, they they get engaged on, it's not their choice to take the fight. It means Maruchidor are going to make that call. Cool okay, guys, we're engaging now. With the Craigs, they're kind of going, oh, they're engaging. Well, they're actually going for the 1-3-1, one, one, it looks like, at the moment, with Plungy Boy working the bot side lane. Uh, Black Station on the I top did just, pick just up one Just 1-4 top bot, 1-4 top bot. Yeah, this, I feel like this puts Plungy Boy in a very susceptible position to get yeah. rushed up. That said, though, if you can get all three members of that mid lane onto that tower, there that tower go. should fall. To scatter the weak only really connects onto Lemstar, but it doesn't matter because the damage is there! Braum goes down! A bit of a like overzealous, overconfident play from Craigsley, and they lose their support, which kind of will put an end to this siege in this they fashion. Just, they should just jump straight on this Ezreal. He's still yeah, he's in trouble. Booby Cracker is going to lead the charge. Arcane shift away, but it doesn't matter because Bobby's going to go forward. There we go. Gets the stun, and that is a very dead Ezreal. Two fall on the side of Craigsley, and Black Station is the next target. The Bianchi boys are on Mr. Darius Foo. Snoopy is there to help, but they don't want to fully commit. They're still giving Black Station a lot of respect. Still, bot lane for Crazy With that Ezreal going down, obviously, yeah. he's got both Sheen items as well, which is... I mean, that's a lot of damage coming up from Ezreal, mm -hmm. I suppose. He's subbed out double tier for double Sheen. Yeah. <laughs> which I can respect, but at the same time, it means he's a lot weaker there. He isn't able to survive those fights as he would have with that uh, Murumane, not the Murumane, the Seraph shield. And I mean, just getting caught out, the killer instinct from the Kai'Sa, along with the flash, uh, unstoppable force from the... Uh, Syndra means he goes down immediately, and losing that uh, Ezreal means the siege stops, everything else stops, and it's going to be very, very hard for Craigsley to reset up this siege once this Baron expires the next I minute. I mean, Palungi shouldn't have been there. The second No, of course not. Lemister's... He should have been sitting next to his yeah. support. Yeah, you're AD carrying, you need your support. Um, <laughs> the job of the support is, it's like, it's like having a toddler. You know, you want to yeah. feed it some money, you go, hey, hey, look, don't cry, don't cry, Ooh. and he's going to be a big, strong boy later, I'm going to carry you through the rest of the game. It almost looked like Craigsley was willing to start the Elder Drake, deciding against it at the end. They, so they, they need the Elder Drake to win this game. They need yeah. the valuable attack. I mean, they have, they don't really get good drakes to stack with it, but they need that Infernal Dragon power in these yes. team fights to actually win. Or else the, the Kaiser Rage Blade Runans combo will just shred through them. Yeah, but as we're still waiting to see if that QSS will be built by Boofy, but it might not matter. This fight will be very determinal of the outcome of this game. It has been started by Gragsley, and they're dragging that Elder out of the Baron Pit. The question is, who will look to engage? Black Station is still sitting on the top lane. Scout of the Week does not connect, but it does burn Zaho's Flash. Elder Dragon at half right now. You can take a look at Mr. League of Legos on the bot side. The Curse of the Sad Mummy and Flash are off. That should be their case. Oh, Here comes Simon, that the Unstoppable Force hits both Lexington and Snap, who pops with the fall up. There goes Brom. The next target looks to be Mr. Zahu, who's stuck in the middle. Hi, Curse so of the Sad Mummy's going to go to place. And down goes the Ezra on the backside. So will do. Will Zaho Flag Station try to do it again? But it's a triple kill over to Boofy. That should be Elder Dragon. That could be a huge trade point. They can't really end on this. Flag Station's actually going to get this inhibitor. They need to get back and stop him. Nope, inhibitor will fall. It doesn't matter, it's a top-side yeah. inhibitor. They're going to be around there for Baron anyway. It's not going to be a huge thing. The Kaiser will insta-kill these minions as well. And you can see the strength of this late-game carry. The Kaiser is able to get in, absolutely shred the entire team. And Crazy really needs to be as far as he's going to lose potentially even a mid lane inhibitor here. There's 30 seconds of respawns, and Darius will not be able to stop these three. It was so unfortunate for Craigsley that Klungi Boy was caught at the very edge of that Curse of the Sad Mummy. If yeah. he had been able to avoid that last bit of ensnarement, maybe he could have turned it around. That said, 
the Black Station is going to try and 1v3 solo this mad mode time. Can he save the tower? Out, Lentor is there to help. It. it looks to be Lee nice. Legos is the target. And kabam! One dunk comes down. Second dunk is not enough oh, for the kill, no. but it still will fall in the end. Black Station picks up two as Tosh McIntosh is running from his life once again from the Black Station. It's not going to be enough to fall. Teleport actually bot lane. They're going to try and, you know, maybe sneak out another tower there. This is a risky I mean, place. Two teleports actually. Zaho and Black Station going bot. There's, there's 40 seconds on the Kaiser. This Kaiser is so unstoppable. Picked up a GA now as well, so when he does go down, uh, should be able to come back up in these fights. So it's really crucial they kind of go for an end extremely soon. That's what they've kind of thought, and that's what they've kind of gone for this play, but Syndra just has too much wave clear in the entire minion wave get cleared out. Yeah, the, the minion wave is cleared out, and so that hopefully will buy enough time. I still feel as if that mid inhibitor is going to fall down, and that will lead two waves crashing into the base. Mercy is going to have to pull out a team fight right here, or they can lose this game. I don't think, I think, you're gonna wait for the Kaiser to come up. Like, oh uh, my gosh, the damage on for oh pulls out the- <laughs> What do you mean the damage from the Ezreal? The Syndra just one hit oh. the carry. That's what you love to do as a mid laner. He's got these four items in, he's got the void stuff as well. Ten stacks on the dark seal and just boom, Ezreal goes down immediately. He's been hitting with the balls all day and there's just nothing you can do. And with Plungy out, that will end this siege. So Marujidor will live to fight another day. This is a very, very close game though. Whoever wins this next team fight will win the game. That yes. is for sure, because you know, with the silent they can just tank up these Nexus towers. The Kaiser will burn them down immediately. Both teams can go for an end no matter where the last team fight ends. Yeah, exactly that. And that next double team fight supers might coming in though do make it very difficult. And the the, build, the Baron is up as well, so this could be a very tight game between both Crazy and Madrid because we're coming right down to the wire. It is that, and if you take a look at the vision as well, Crazy has done a very good job of warding out the yeah. entire path to the Baron pit, which does mean that if Maruchi Dor does try and make a play for that Baron. Craigslee can either, you know, look to ambush them, stop them in the tracks, and then fight them over that Baron, or possibly backdoor and get yeah. into the base and just bring it down. Yeah, this is a very close game. It could go either way. I do. I mean, obviously, like this Kaiser is huge, but if she can't get these damage or if she can't get into these fights, she, she needs to get a QSS. I don't know why she's going for yeah. Nexus Two here. Why she's going for all three upgrades? Just get the uh, get the QSS, play safe, get your life still as well, so you can sustain through these fights. Yeah. If she gets caught by this Darius, if caught by oh. the bleed, that's how she'll go down. Well, in the end, Crazy is going to start this Baron. I do not they believe Mercy Door can contest it. They have to give it up with three and hit down. Yeah, I'm not too high on that GA because I feel like if Boofy Crackers is going down with that GA, they've lost the fight. Like yeah, at that the, stage, the Darius will be able to wait for it to come up yes. in the killer. The other thing is, I don't know, like the double supers with this Baron buff is going to be really influential. If they can, they can apparently just run mid now and try to end before one of the inhibs respawn. Because once you don't get those double supers spawning, it makes it so much easier uh, for Maruchidor to defend. But uh, this is potentially the game in This here. could be it, as once again, Craigslee is setting themselves in position. They're going back to the 1 3 1, which wasn't successful the first time, but maybe with the three in hips down, they may have better luck this time. We're just trying around. to get all the waves in, I suppose, and they're going to try to group up in the middle with all these six. Yeah, try, exactly. try to push six mini super minions in at once. Maybe eight if they but can. But it does leave them a bit disjointed. That said, though, they're all going to be grouping up now, so Marujiro is trying to find that quick fight before fight. This is their... the second Baron as yeah. well, so these minions are so much harder. Yeah, actually, that Nexus Tower is going to fall, so the first Nexus Tower falls just from the minions alone. Black Station stepping forward, trying to, to get caught. They need to look for a fight. They need to find it. Oof. True Shop Raj doing what it can. Oh no! Toss McIntosh misses completely! And but doesn't matter, Scout of the Week actually hits the back line! Forces Snapper to go in, this is the big fight! League Legos has been ulti by, uh, to, uh, by Lulu to try and stop it. Oh, what a curse the sad like, mummy! Double kill from Bobby Shirima! It looks like Ricky is gonna wipe out this fight! Black Station's lost with life, he falls as well! And Maruchidor wins the fight! They should clean up the minions with that their was second Nexus Tower still alive! And Maruchidor, this is the fight that they wanted! The question is, can they turn into second box. I don't think they can end, they can't end, is that? That is oh. a huge fight coming out. It's the power of that team fight comp. The Syndra and the Amumu carry that fight. A huge curse to the Sandman onto four members. All four of them being alive. Bobby was able to one shot the, uh, the Sandra, immediately push it, use it, even her ultimate, or the Ring of Frost. And that was able to clean up. That's a huge spread the week to stun the other three members up with the Kaiser. The come wild and take him growth out. onto League of Legos as well oh, kind of course. caught me off guard, but it enabled him to like drop that curse of the Sandman while holding the places in. Any champions in place, like the knockup held the carries in place, and then boom, first of the sad mummy. There's nothing Craig Lee could do to escape from that situation. Such a huge combo, and you know, as it gets later in the game, we don't fight. Amuruchi does comp only gets stronger and stronger. They're now ahead in gold of Craigslee, yes. and it's going to be so interesting to see how this game goes. These inhibitors have got to come up soon, I think, yes. and once they come up, the game's going to be completely different. Yeah, I mean, this is it. We got to that, four, I did say it was like the 40 minute mark. That's where I feel like Marushidor will come online. We hit that 40 minute mark. They get that ace with their backs against the wall. First inhib is wall up. True Shop Rogers is kind of going down the middle, trying to do some wave. It's clear. a 20 second corner. It doesn't even matter. You just yeah. spam it now from base. Pretty much. It looks like that's what he's doing, actually. Is he can sit in the fountain, I believe, just waiting for I one mean, more item. Level 18, all of the carries from uh, Marushidor, mm -hmm. well, they've just 
having those super minions coming, you basically gives you so much golden EXP, those huge minions coming through. That's completely turned the game around. Crazy, unable to execute on this early game lead they built themselves now. It is going to be very, very tough to see who comes out with his victory. Baron's up in a good another yes. three minutes, I think. Mm -hmm. And that is definitely going to be the start of the game, well, the 45 I mean, minute mark. I'm so concerned about this Elder Dragon up in 15 seconds because I don't know if Marushidor can contest that with the two inhibitors down. It would be very risky to. So Craigsley has an advantage that they didn't have that last fight. I mean, if there's they no, pick up there's no teleports dragon. available from Crazy, so he can no. definitely move up and contest. It's just about the pressure on the Nexus Tower from the swing minions. Maybe look for yeah. a backdoor from all five. Oh, maybe, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're going to start that Elder Dragon. I, I believe mean, they're looking for a death the push. The the both of the inhibitors are about to respawn. There's no more supers on the map uh, for Craigsley. So once those inhibitors respawn, maybe look to catch them out as they come for vision. But I just feel like even if they catch up, they have to catch out either Boofy Crackers or Bobby. If they catch up any of the other members, there's enough heal and enough yep. tankiness for them to survive. Yeah, I would have liked them to actually have rushed down this Elder Dragon. Especially if they burnt all their cooldowns on killing a Scion or a, a Moom or even a, even a Lulu. It just means that Bobby and Boofy are just going to yeah. absolutely shred. Yep, second inhibitor has respawned, third one not long yet. And yeah, I would have liked Craigslee to rush down that Elder Dragon. I feel like they need that to win the fight. They do, they need the extra damage. They don't have the same uh, late game potential, late game scaling for these items. Lissandra famously falls off after two mm -hmm. items. Uh, of course, Syndra just gets stronger and stronger. Kaisa, one of the famous late game carries, and Ezreal, of course, is one of those new game powerhouses. And now he's completely full build. There's not much else he can get stronger, and he needs an extra level. Uh, to get any tell powerful. Darius is full boot as well. <laughs> Warwick is a tank, he falls off late as well, it's very hard. Doesn't have the Titanic Kite? Oh, he does have it, I'm just yeah, trolling. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's it's very interesting to see how this game goes. All right, as so we see the Elder Dragon has been started, already down to half, Craigsley looking to secure it, but Marujidor is moving forward. There's a bit of a death push though. With Probably get caught yeah. out here. Ooh, they could get caught. Lemon Star though, the ward was placed there, so the death push was spotted, but that Elder Dragon is so, so low right now, and it's actually gonna go over to Craigsley. So they get the objective, but instead of looking to fight, they're actually gonna look to back off, or no, they're gonna regroup mid, try and siege, try and get some in hits, maybe end the game. This is the third attempt for them, I feel like, with the advantage in their position to yeah. end this game. Is the third time the charm, or does Maruchidor hold him back yet again? I still think Maruchidor's got this game. The Kai's just so big. Even this Elder Dragon, depends how they use it effectively. It's the second Elder buff for them as well, so it's actually huge. It's six times uh, Cloud Drake, four times, or two, two times Elder, uh, not Elder, Infernal as well. So they've got a lot of stats. And it lasts for about five minutes. The second Elder Dragon is one of the most powerful buffs in the game. But uh, this Kaiser is so powerful as well. So it's going to be see who can utilize it. If I can definitely jump onto this Kaiser in this backline and stop a good solid curse of the Sad Mummy coming out of League of Lofit Legos, they could potentially take this game. But again, it's just down to the wire, these last team yeah. I can't call which way it's going to go. It depends who executes better on the day in the moment. Yes. And we'll do that. We'll take out this game between these two I'm sides. I'm almost wondering if Craigslee should just wait and get the Baron and start and look for that fight yeah, with Baron because sure. of how long that Elder Dragon is. And it does seem that's what they're doing. They're kind of waiting in the jungle. It actually looks like they're trying to bait Maruchidor into an unfavorable situation in the jungle. But Maruchidor has been playing so disciplined. Like, this Death Quest strategy has not really worked at all after the 20 minute mark. No, they did it. They got caught out once. They learned from their mistakes that, hey guys, we're going to sit back now. We're going to hold our base. We're going to, all we're going to do is hold this inhibitor line, wait for these, uh, 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 these big buffs to come out. And it's a 45 minute mark now and this game could go either way still. It's hanging yeah. in the balance. The gold lead means, the gold means nothing now. Mm -hmm. Everyone's full build is just about which, uh, which characters can come through, who's buying their potions and who can control around these objectives the best. And with the death timers as they are as well, really only one or two picks could cost you the game if you can yeah. get out clean. So it's going to be interesting. Again, Craig Lee, just seem content to just play this game out. Wait longer and longer. Wait for that absolute correct moment. Baron is up. No one has made a movement. Okay, it does actually look like Sap Nu is they're making running straight to it. I mean, yeah, they're going to be going. Maruchidor has to contest this. If they give it up, they. It's. I feel like there's not. They're just waiting for him to come on. I don't think they're ever going to take the initiative to win the game unless they really contest it here. They look made for a desperate. But again, game. Craigslee is a little bit too nervous to pull the trigger on the Baron. Like they should know it's not warded because Maruchidor has not left their base for the past 15 minutes. So they should be able to get. Okay, well there's oh, a little bit blue of a trinket. blue trinket on there. Good timing by that blue trinket. They have to start They have yeah, to. Yeah, they, for they a need fight, to go surely. for it, but they're, they're not stepping up. I mean, they could just sort of just shove mid, but I think when you back yeah. with the Baron, it's going to go down anyway. Yeah, Baron will go to Craigslee. They're giving it up another neutral objective free. And they're just moving into the yeah. boss type jungle. I don't know what my Marichal's macro is here. It's yeah, it looks very... like they're trying to they're gonna try and shove bot. I'm actually surprised that Craigsley backed instead of just taking that mid. There's not really many more items. I mean they the, build. The, the the minions are pushed back in here, so they have to reset and re get the cooldown and oh. stuff like that. Oh, teleport actually going into the dragon pit right now. I'm curious who that is. We'll see it right now. It is Zaho has teleported behind Maruchidor, so they're going to look for that fight. They're going to look for that flank, but unfortunately, all he's able to see is League of Legos. And the Elder Dragon buff is actually gone, so they weren't able to get anything with the two Elder Dragon Void Seekers connecting onto Plungy Boys. Here we go. Zaho gets two roots in place, and League of Legos chunked a bit, but not enough to warrant an all-in. It actually looks like Bobby Shruma might be caught out of position. 
Bobby Sharima is the one in trouble on the main map. You can see that is actually Snap who were going to work, but scattered the weak oh, back. Meanwhile, stun. on the other side, Vixation is leading the charge. League of Legends trying to come back in. That Curse of the Sand Mummy is up. The question is, will it be dropped? The answer is no. So Black Station is getting a lot of hits. Finally, the rest of Marucci door is going to help. As one in, True Shop Rob comes through doing quite a little damage. Bobby Sharima has to flash out to Fesselin. And oh, they got to the Kaisa! The GA is popped and Kaisek is in a lot of trouble. They need to get in defense. Movie Crackers cannot be defensive. Oh, Movie the Crackers falls. That could be the game. I believe Craig Lee has just won it. Why was Kaisa there? She was going in to kill the uh, the Darius. She was she, on top of the the yeah. the, 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 the uh, sorry the Kaisa and the the Syndra got zoned off. There's two of them alive, one dead on the side of Craig's, and it could potentially be the end of the game. The Ka the yeah. Syndra has to make an amazing play to kind of control yeah, this. It's, it's not is over game, yet, well. but Boofy Crackers has fallen, and he was the key winning point for Marucci Door. They have he, to hold on for 45 more seconds. The GA just did not come through like we wanted, so that will be at least three inhibitors, if not the game. That said, though, Bobby Shurinda is still up. He is a 12, 3, and 9 on this Syndra, and has been. So powerful with the scatter of the week. If he is able to get Plungy Boy, burst him down, there might be follow up with Todd McIntosh, but a 2v4 in this situation is so hard. And especially all the three inhibs go down again, so it's a lot of pressure coming through. The next, they still got the Baron on them as well, the third Baron of this game. The, game, the later and later, the more powerful it gets. It gives you about plus 120 AP. That means that ultimate is up. If he is able to connect that onto Bobby, that will end the game right then and there. Todd McIntosh trying to do what he can, but these Baron empowered minions are doing so much damage. To this tower, it's already at half. That said, death timers are starting to come up. Boofy Crackers is back alive, and as is the entire the Marucci team, and they're looking to fight. Here comes Cyan. He's not able to connect, but it doesn't matter because he is going right after Plungy Boy. No, he's turning around after. That's another backward Cyan too. Are you kidding me? It doesn't matter though because the GA is popped. Thanks to Bobby Sharima dropping that ultimate, and pop goes the Ezreal. So once again, Craig's Lee is on the back foot. They've lost their AD carry. Lemstar trying to do what he can to stop the incoming charge, but they they have actually lost this game. Nope, they're going to possibly reset. With three inhibitors down, I don't know how hard Marucci Dor can commit. Just commit for the end. Give us, give us something exciting. These teams, the Marucci is playing so safe, so conservative. They're not going for anything. They're not punishing these windows, and that's why they're falling further and further behind. They can't go for the end though, because they're three inhibitors down. The two back, Nexus towers down. Back in the 30 minute mark, they just sat in their base and they didn't contest. They gave up two free Baron Barons pretty much when they could have been contesting it. And they just didn't when they were stronger as well. And Craig's are just getting lifelines to keep hanging on in this game. But they're taking them and they're playing them to the fullest advantage. So full credit to both sides here. <laughs> Marucci will need to play more aggressively and really play. They are ahead. They have the late game comp. So it's a late game. It's a super late game. So just kill Craig's them all. Lee, though. They had a 4v2 situation for 25 seconds in their base, and they didn't pull the trigger to end the game. I mean, they tried, but they just couldn't, right? I guess. The, the Cinder was just wave clearing permanently. So far, it was so much AP. It's just so much harder Sapnu's to actually ultimate kill was up and available, though. He could have gone for it. I feel like Sapnu could have gone for the play, gone for something. These teams are so nervous to lose this game right now that they're playing so defensively. And I feel like whichever team makes that more aggressive play gets that catch, gets that pick that's going to win that game. That said, there's nothing Marucci Dor can do right now to stop this Elder Dragon. No, there's, again, it's that all three pressure in the, in the uh, base. It's all, it's all about just objective pressure with two, double all hit down. Get another, get another neutral pressure with all hit down. Eventually, soon, Ian Marucci Dor has to crack. Crazy have to win this game. Because they're just playing so much pressure, getting yeah. all these neutral objectives. There's right. absolutely nothing Marucci has picked up. Three even though Elder ahead. Dragons. This is the third Elder it Dragon of the game. It doesn't really get bigger after second, but yeah. I know. But I'm just saying, like, in terms <laughs> of the context of the game, it's taken three Elder Dragons, all three inhibitors this down. Is, an hour long is game. this what it's going to be that ends the game? That is the question. Once again, Boofy Crackers, if he falls, I feel they lose the game. I felt that last time he fell, but they still were able to stay alive. So I don't know what's going on. Yeah, no J available. He should sell the J and get a QSS. Where's your QSS, Boofy? Black Station standing in front of Craigsley. He's looking to try and pull someone back into his team, but he's not going to find it as the rest of Craigsley is actually rotating to the top side of the Nexus. Sign Ultimate is not going to hit anyone and this might lead to a robot for Black Station who doesn't want to risk it. Scatter of the Week misses. So this is a small opportunity. Will they take it? Bobby Sharima has to pop the time. This should be the game. Boofy got jumped on by Snapu. Meanwhile, poor poor Taz is trying to 1v4 on the top side. This has to be it. Stun on the Snapu. The no, it looks like they're going to make it. Kyle's on the side. Bobby just down, but those health bars are so good. They're on the bot side. And this ended. Craigsley finally takes this one home. What a game. 51 Ooh. minute game. Absolutely insane plays from both high schools. Marucci Dor, but they just got so far ahead in that early game. We were able to just smash over and over again, keep consistently pressing to take down the Marucci Wall side, oh. and they fall finally. What a game. I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to bring us back all the way to a point I made at the very start, week one. The team that fin knows how to finish games the best is going to have the most success in this tournament. Both of these teams kind of struggled, to finish, struggled <laughs> to finish this game. Craigsley, I feel, kind of just got it by default because they were that far ahead in terms of map control. They just they got so many different objectives stacked up, so many yeah. buffs. They were getting 
They would have probably gotten a buff. Like, the Ezra would have had probably plus 80 AD. Yes. And whoever took Gathering Storm that game, damn, that is a very, very impressive game. And the fact that they've just taken it out over and over again. I mean, they got ahead in the early game. They obviously had the comp where they had to... Yep. They decided, look, we're going to get ahead. We're going to get our leads through winning early. We're going to make sure that... Uh, you know, we, we get the Ezreal ahead, we get the uh, Darius ahead on the top side, and once these champions get ahead, we're going to start snowballing through the mid game. They didn't do that maybe as cleanly as they would have hoped, yep. but they still got that lead, they still pushed it. And Marucha just played way too passive. They're like, oh, we have late game scaling, we have late game scaling, we have late game scaling. Yep. It's late game, you've scaled, why are you still sitting back? Why aren't yeah. you taking the aggressor and saying, we've got a three item Kaiser, we've got mm -hmm. a three item Syndra, we're going to kill you now, we've got our Mumu tanked up, our, our Sion tanked up, you can't kill them, we can kill you with two yep. auto attacks from AD carry. I don't know, we'll just go farm bot side uh, while you take the Baron. Yeah, I mean, that was frustration. Also, you know, just in the way how they played those team fights, I, Boofy should not have been caught out that far forward away from the team. Yeah, exactly. Like, that was a miss. And, and speaking of those team fights, we had some highlights ready to go. We start breaking yes. in the analysis because this is a lot of big fights. There's a in lot this of game highlights, I imagine, for this one as we take. Like, oh, look, it's, I believe this was our first. This, this is the first dragon? big fight where yeah, Marichal started to turn it around. Dragon. Obviously, Marichal here, you yeah. look at the positioning here of the Syndra. Of course, in the flash out of the two carries immediately, but the big key thing you got to keep in your arm is the Moo Moo. He had mm -hmm. so many clutch um, curse, curse of the sad, sad mummies, yes. and it was just so good to see him come in here. Slowly playing around his manning, the unstoppable onslaught lands on two of them there. The yep. stun's coming through the, the Syndra, the, the, uh, the Sandra goes into yes. the back there. Zaho on his own on the front line, but he's sticking so around so long, damage. and that curse of the sad mummy just connecting. That yeah, and wipe up in the bot lane the Darius taken down. I don't know why they should have just taken the Elder Dragon here. I don't know why they didn't. They just kind of just left it, walked away. I think they were but too scared of the Darius split push. He's which not gonna, is he's not going to end the game, right? No. He's got normal minions. No. He can back in time. They should just finish up that Elder half health and probably just either sent one person back to deal with the Darius because yep. immediately they backed off and lost that fight. The Darius backed off. Yep. They just pushed mid there. They could have looked for an oh, end. Oh, they could have gone and they, and they, they, I mean, they had the call there. They were on the yep. um, inhibitor tower. It went down because obviously the call was commit to it, but the Scion backed off while the Amumu and the Kaiser were still hitting it. So I think that's a little bit of miscommunication there between the side. The Scion obviously backed off. We should have just yep. sat there taking the tower. He had like 4k health, right? So he could yep. sit in there all day. Uh, and I mean, he didn't zone up. The Darius was able to get on top of the Kaiser, and the Kaiser just went down easy as. So that's probably why she picked up the GA. She was a bit scared of that. And I think that bit of miscommunication could have cost him the game, and that made him a little bit less insightful. I feel like that passiveness, players. though, is just really the theme out of Maruchi yeah. as we continue for yet another Oh, this is the team fight that kind of... I mean, we thought they would have ended the game off this, yes, but this unfortunately they went in the game. this is I thought was the end of the game. I'm I mean, just keep your eyes here on the Kaiser. Yeah. Obviously, the... Uh, Syndra got zoned off immediately in the mm -hmm. backside, and then they're trying to find it here. This Kaisers, the Syndra's are away yeah. from the team behind that wall, jumped on by there, forces the Kaiser to come and fight it, and they're kind of fighting on two fronts, like Germany yeah. in the Second World War. You can't really win that uh, until mm -hmm. you kind of group. They need to just group up as five and sort of bunch together and start looking for stuff. Yeah, I think as the, there's so much damage coming out of this Ezreal, and Oof. so yeah, Boofy's chunked down. Yeah, you see, Boofy gets hit by there by the Lassandra, and then, right? and, then and, then, and then yeah, Boofy, no, no Boofy ults. Oh, yeah, he ults, ults in behind because the Syndra gets caught by. Uh, the Glacial Prism there, yeah. GF obviously pops, can't get in. No support either, this Darius kind of just zoning out in the front line and no one's able to get past him. Uh, just because of the way they fought around there and Bobby had to burn all his cooldowns to try to get out of that area. And the, the, the Syndra in that uh, team fight really just mispositioned. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where they got caught out and they lost that team fight. Despite, that, is, that, is their, that was their chance to win the game. That they should have won chance. that fight and they should have won the game. Exactly. Mis-executed a little bit. But obviously there's time to practice on that. And in these high pressure scenarios, it's very hard to practice those 15 minutes. I, I feel for Bobby as well. Like, because, as yeah. I was saying, yeah, Bobby's misposition. Oh, he played so and he well played this game. he played so well until that point. He was really That was really pretty much carrying. the only mistake he made the exactly. entire game. His yeah. scatter of the weeks were on point. He was sniping that Ezreal left, right, and center in the team yeah. fights. It was just unfortunate that one little misplay kind of cost him that best opportunity to bring that one home. Mm. I mean, I don't even know who to give him MVP to, because I feel like the Ezreal um, from... Uh, Crazy yeah. played so well, but then it, like towards those mid, those later team fights got caught out a couple times, got caught out that Baron fight, the first big fight that come through. And I think he could have played a little mm -hmm. better, but he was definitely one of the strongest performers on the side of Craigsley. I'm, I'm I think um Syndra as well. Obviously, Syndra? Bobby was very well performed, but you currently give MVP to a losing team. Right? Unfortunately. Played way too passively. You get the um, ace award according to OP.gg yeah, for the ace award. So yeah, that. Bobby gets the ace, that's for sure. Because I think he played very, very well. I think their Mumu as well was one yes. of the standout oh. players. I think the Mumu was probably we're probably, yeah. I would say one of the best players in the game, but yep. I mean, it's just so hard to pick who was the I'm best player. I'm leaning towards Braum. I think, yeah, I'm I was about to be on the Braum was playing very, very well uh, in that game. I think, you know, I think I mm -hmm. he's a good Braum MVP. So, congratulations yeah. uh, to the Ch Craigsley support there for yeah. picking up better war. I think he played very well throughout the game, was able to get some great leads as well, landing those cues, the winter's mm -hmm. bite. Uh, until, I mean, you saw in the early game just absolutely popping those bot lanes yes. once they got the stun up. Uh, just big performance out from everybody in the side and mm -hmm. uh, able to take out the game quite effectively. But yeah, it was were, very exciting for Team Indy. I wouldn't say I would call it effective, but I yeah. definitely say they took the game, they got the one. Both
That was a long one. It didn't necessarily have to be. <laughs> um, but you it know, to be, but it was. Hey, hey, it's the nerves. It's like, so it's, entertaining. It, it's entertaining and it's the nerves. You know, you're in a competitive environment. You're not going to take those same risky plays that you might take in yeah. solo queue. So you can't come down too harsh on them. But you know, you can only improve from here. For yeah, both, both sides teams. played really, really well today. Of course, that does bring us to the end of our broadcast. A great game, really exciting for mm -hmm. both teams. Of course, I'd like to thank uh, University of Queensland for. Uh, giving us this broadcast um, and yep. you know, providing all this studio and all this for us. I'd like yep. to thank every team for participating as well. And remember, if your high school is still interested in getting involved, it's really great to sign up, yep. get involved for a competition, competition uh, get involved in these uh, young esports competitions. Uh, we will be running some stuff during the holidays, more on that next week. But yep. uh, we'd like to thank all of you tuning in tonight for this really exciting context. Thanks again to UQ and uh, we'll uh, see you yeah, guys we'll next you guys Tuesday next. live here at 4.30pm. Yeah, next PM. Tuesday, week five is going to be our last broadcast before the break. So please tune in, get comfy, maybe make some popcorn or a sandwich <laughs> or something. If the game goes that long again, you'll have an entire time to eat an entire meal. There we'll you catch go. you then. See ya. Good night.